The first project is a rabbit garden. All right, so I have this little thrifted uh, soup bowl, I think it is, and it has Peter Rabbit on it. It probably had a lid at some point, but it didn't come that way to me. Love the pictures, though. Here's a little, de little detailed look at the bottom. Beatrix Potter. I'm going to take some foam, a little bunny that I th thrifted. Some of this snow fence, and I got it at the thrift store. Some little random picks. These look kind of spiky. It looks like rosemary. I'm going to use those and cutting them down. A couple of shades of brown, dark and a lighter one. Here are the colors. And then some paint brushes. We're going to make sure that you cut the foam down that you're using so that it fits in your cup. If it fits nice and tight, you don't even need glue. I'm going to add the darkest brown on the bottom and we're going to cover this in the dark brown color. I do make a little bit of a mess and get some on the cup, but you'll see it's uh, pretty easy to clean up when it's still wet. I'm just taking a little um, baby wipe and wrapping around my finger and putting my fingernail under it and cleaning up those edges. I'm going to use two coats and when it is completely dry, we will move on to the next part. Now I'm choosing my front or back, which part that I like the best and I'm going to use this as the front. All right, I'm going to grab that lighter color brown and we're going to add some little lines down it. Now I'm just going to kind of offload some of this paint on this brush and I don't want these to be completely straight lines. So this is going to look like we've tilled up the soil and we've got it hipped up and we have our little rows ready for our planting. So I'm just going straight down there. I'm just going to bump it up and down until I get it as thick as I like the line. And it looks like little tracks in a garden, doesn't it? And that is the idea. And you can just make this, um, put as many lines as you want, as few lines as you want. Um, you know, whatever colors you like. I'm going to cut some of the tips off the rosemary, that faux rosemary, and it's going to be the top. This is going to be like a little carrot garden. So that's going to be the greens for the top of our carrots. Now I'm measuring from the back of both of the little handles there to get the size of the fence that I'm going to use. And I just cut them off with clippers because they're attached with wire and they're flexible. And I'm just going to push these down to that first line of wires. You can see I have a nice snug fit and it's not going anywhere. However, if you feel the need, you could always put some hot glue down in the sides between where it, um, the foam is or the cup is and the fence. So now we have a little fence on the back. I wanna decide first where I want my little bunny to stand. And I think I like him standing over to the side like he's checking out his garden, he's showing off his goods. And I'll just put some on his feet and then I'll add some to his, um, right on his back where he's up against the fence so that he doesn't tilt over. It's just going to give him a little more support. Cute. He's already holding a carrot. Okay, so then I'm going to take a little hot glue and put these down. And you have to hold them for just a second because they're not poked through the styrofoam. They're just sitting on top. So you got to give that glue a chance to sit up. You might even choose to use maybe a uh, cool temperature glue for this. And it'll dry quicker. And then I'm just kind of spacing them out and putting them down on those rows. And it looks like little rows of carrots in a garden, doesn't it? So it looks kind of rocky and I like the look of it and I want it to look a little more rustic. So we're going to make it appear like maybe this is Peter Rabbit and he had to clear a little bit of land before he put his garden in. So there's some little stumps and things around his garden. He's been doing some, some work there in the garden. And these are what remain. So these little sticks are just the ones that you get in a bag at Dollar Tree, but you can certainly get things out of your yard. If you don't have the same bowl I have, you don't have to use that. You could use maybe a, a soup terrain, you know, if you've got one that isn't enormous, or you could make a really big one if you wanted to. You could use the top of a cup. You can find all kinds of little village um, pieces at 
Dollar Tree, so you could use a gnome or something like that in your garden if you wanted. Now I just want to give it a little extra embellishment, a little more festivity. So I'm going to take a few pieces of jute, and this is uh, a, the regular brown, some orange, and then some white. And I'm going to put them in the handle on one side. And just to kind of balance it out, I'm putting it on the side where the rabbit is not. So it's across from where the rabbit is. And I'm going to just tie that in a knot and trim it off. You could use baker's twine here, or you don't have to use anything. If you choose not to put any extra, you certainly do not have to. But I want the idea of this to be something that can go in, you know, from spring to Easter and possibly into summer. So now once I get that piece down there on the bottom, I'm going to take a longer piece of the three and I'm going to make a bow. This is a simple bow. This is like we tie our shoes or this is how I tie my shoes. Interesting enough, I learned how to make this bow from a doctor um, when I was working as a nurse in a hospital. Uh, my shoes kept coming untied and he showed me how to tie them this way rather than tying them where you poke the little rabbit in the hole, whatever that little saying is when you're learning to tie your shoes. Yeah, and it works. It locks that bow in and it stays there a long time. So I've done my shoes that way since he taught me that in like early 2000. Now I found this little, it's actually like a little pepper, but it looks like a carrot to me. So I'm just gonna put that right in that bow and have it hanging on the side. And you can tell that now it gives you an idea that this is Peter Rabbit's little carrot garden. The next project is a summer cottage. Y'all, this one's fun. I got some dark chocolate paint, a couple of paint brushes, of course, some more of that E6000 glue, a popsicle stick, and some Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree, some scraps of florals, a little fencing that I got at the thrift store. You can get it at any craft store. It's got wire in it, a little scrap of matte moss and this ornament from Dollar Tree. You can use any house though. You don't have to use this little ornament. I like the size of it for what I was doing, so that's why I chose it. But the shiny side's gonna be difficult to stick anything to. You wanna make sure that everything goes on the flat side. Take the sticker off, wipe it really good, and make it pretty. We're gonna fill in the hole at the top, so on the shiny side, we're gonna take a little masking tape or whatever tape you have. I just used this because it was white. I'm gonna press it down and a little bit of that lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna press down in there and then kind of pile it up on the top to make sure I have plenty on there. It's easy enough and you could really just do it with your finger if you wanted, but to make sure that it's not depressed, that it's flat, that's what it looks like. I'm just gonna use a little scraper and scrape that off and now it's flush. I'm going to give it a chance to dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to put the fence on the house. We're going to need a little space so we can have a flower garden out front. And I'm just going to use my nippers here to just kind of, these are my bull nose pliers or cutters. I'm going to use those to cut my popsicle sticks. But whatever you have, you know, these are thin. You could always cut these with a pair of uh, crafting scissors if you wanted to. I just don't want to dull my scissors that way, so I've opted for this, uh, this way of cutting. Then I'm going to sand it because I want it to look professional. I don't want all those splinters on there. I don't want to hurt my hard working hands, and I don't want this to look cheaply thrown together. So now I'm trying to get an idea of how I'm going to make a space in the front. We're going to use this chocolate paint and paint the popsicle stick and both of the blocks. You can cut some one inch pieces of popsicle stick, but I found this bag of little, I'm just gonna call them shingles because that's what I use them for. 
these transfers from Dollar Tree. Look at these things, y'all. How farmhouse is that? Three different options. And since we're going into, uh, we're doing spring and summer here, I'm going to use the lighter color. And I think that that lighter color is going to be beautiful against the dark chocolate paint that we've used for the fencing and the yard. So I'm trying to use my hands and fingers to center this pretty much to make sure that the pattern is straight. And then I'm going to rub it down with my hands and I'll grab that same tool. Now this tool that I have came from a basket making kit that a friend of mine gave me um, from Goodwill. So thank you Lorenzo for that. And then once you get it all burnished down, I'm just going to rub the rest of it around and I do have some stuck on my hand. It will stick to you. It will definitely stick. Look at my finger. I've got it on my finger. So now it's nice and smooth and we look like we have a little wooden house, a little painted wooden house. This is going to be the bottom and we're going to just mark where this needs to be. You can use a pen for that or you can just kind of eyeball it again and then take some of that Gorilla Glue, place it down on those marks and make sure that you let that dry before you move on. So once they're both done, we're going to turn that to the side, add some more Gorilla Glue or a combination of Gorilla Glue and your super glue, whatever kind that you have. And we're just going to apply it to the building blocks because they'll hold it in place. You don't have to worry about trying to put anything on the bottom. I will press those to the sides. There's a little tiny gap, just a fraction of a gap on the sides. We're going to put a grass piece down here. You can skip this part or instead of painting your bottom a brown, you could always paint it green. A little more glue here and then we'll just put that piece down. You could also use some of that faux AstroTurf if you wanted to. I just like the moss mat. I use what I can find really. So I chose these flowers because when you pull them off they look like little bushes or little bunches of flowers that would be pretty much the right proportion for what I'm looking for. They came from the thrift store. It's like a baby breath, baby's breath kind of thing, but you can use whatever you find. Dollar Tree has lots of little goodies you can look through. And then I'm gonna take the flattest part and put it toward the back, add some glue, and just put it in place. Give it a chance to dry. I'm gonna add one more in the middle. This is a nice little English garden we got going on in here. Perfect for the cottage. So you can see that these little pickets are on a wire, just like a fence would be. I am going to measure and use my clippers and cut them down. I have a little excess, but we'd rather have more, right, than less, because we can always cut more off. Now, if you get your dimensions right, you'll be able to glue down partly to the block, partly to the little house in the back. Give it a chance to dry, then you can gently fold it, and then pull it around to the other side add the glue there. Again, you can use a combination of glues if you need the extra hold and then fold it over. You can see that my wires are still sticking out there. Not a problem. We're going to use those to our benefit. Add extra glue in where you need it. Not a problem and you really can't see it because we painted that stuff dark. And the idea of it being dark is that it disappears kind of into the fence. So now these are just a pair of bent pliers that goes probably with jewelry type stuff. I get everything thrifted so I'm not really sure. And I just bent the wires backwards. That's going to help hold it in place. So we're taking advantage of that. Now y'all when I was little my grandfather had a chain link fence in the front yard and they grew, uh, I think they're called Narcissus, and they grew in front of the fence where it was in the yard and they went through the fence and you could see them on the outside of the fence. And I always thought that was so pretty. I don't know why, but in my childhood mind, that just made them look better. So we're gonna have our little flowers growing wild too. And we're gonna put them here and there. You can see them on the inside and they're growing out of the fence. They're just spilling out everywhere with life and goodness. If you don't wanna do yours this way, you do not have to do it this way. 
And if you don't want to do flowers, you could always choose greenery. Maybe some mini ferns or some grasses or something like that would be cute. Just to give you an idea. It's all about making it your own. Whatever looks good to you, just take my videos for inspiration. So I'll just add some more here and there where it looks like they might would grow. And you can see that it stands up on its own. I'm going to, there's shine all over this, right? There's a shiny spot where it's covered in whatever they cover it in. So I'm using a nail file here and I'm just gonna really dig into that and try to remove some of that shiny stuff. To give us a little more stability while we're working on the roof, I'm just going to glue a jingle block on the back. We can take that off later, it's so not a worry. I'm going to use my E6000 to go along the roof line. And then we will be using hot glue also, but this takes a while to dry, so that's a benefit. We can take a little more time with our placement and not worry. I've painted these little shingle pieces that I called them, and I'm gonna start adding those where they're overlapping. So the hot glue section will go, it's gonna overlap about a third of the way down on the shingle that is underneath it. And then the other part of the shingle, or the upper part, will go down into that E6000, because this will really lock everything into place. We do not want our crafts falling apart, right? I know I don't. That would be very frustrating. So once I've got those in line, I'm gonna go back over it with hot glue right in the back. And this is gonna give it some more security. The little tiny gaps that are in there will now be filled in by that glue. Once it cools off, you can kind of take your finger and run down it and you know make sure that it's nice and smooth. And we'll start on the other side. You can cut these little pieces into whatever size you need to make sure that it fits on your little roof here. Now I've left the very top part open because we're gonna have a smaller section that goes over the top that we can connect together to make the peak of the house. And you see how we did that? We just cut those little two pieces down. Now don't worry about the back looking messy. You can always cover that up. This to me is important because it's really gonna secure everything down. All right, now when you do your shingles, paint both sides. I didn't in the beginning, but I will go back. You'll see that and I will do underneath it too. So I'm taking a picket off of that fence and I'm just going to clip it, sand it down, dip it in that paint so that I have it brown on both ends. We don't wanna see the cut lines. And then we're gonna start working on the chimney part. I didn't feel like I wanted to put more shingles here because it's a chimney. So I didn't want shingles on my chimney. Then I'll take another little piece and just kind of eyeball it, I'm gonna measure, see how much I need. I can trim down if I need to trim a little bit more. And then the same thing here, we're gonna go in the back. You can see where the little openings are and we're gonna secure it down to that back part. I'm just using an extra piece here to make sure that those tiny pieces don't fall. And then you're gonna go back over it with your paint. A flat tip brush will get me right up to the edge without running into my house. And I'll get that sealed off nicely. And then I'm using just a little cut section of another piece of that what I'm calling shingles to make the rest of the chimney so that it connects to where the next little piece drops down. And I'm liking the look. I'm gonna take two more of those pieces and I'll paint those white because the house needs some windows. Even if this was the back of the house or the front of the house, however you wanna do it, you can even hang a little wreath on here or use a stencil on the front of your house to make it really extra fancy. You can put wording on there, but I've kind of gotten away from some of the wording. So I'm just using that same hot glue and we're gonna put our windows down on there. I think this is really cute. It's a cute little cottage. Maybe it's a summer cottage. Now you can remove your block from the back if you're ready to, and you can use some type of a blow dryer or heating tool to remove all the little glue spider webs that are on there so it looks finished and complete. You
The next is going to be a fairy home. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun on this one. We're going to start off with some pine bark that I have in my yard. A little fairy door that came from Dollar Tree. And here's the details. It's going to clear up for you. There you go. Fairy garden forest figurine. Little door. Really cute. Needs a little work, but that's okay. We're going to change this up just a little. You can use whatever type of moss mat, loose moss, reindeer moss, whatever you have. You can use some lichen if you want to use that. Whatever you got. We're going to be using some of these little sticks. And then pieces that have been foraged. I want to use the bigger pieces here in this project. And then there's some that look like little burnt pancakes. You can see how these are shaped. And there are some turkey tail and some more moss. It's a lot of textures going on here, which I absolutely love. So when you're out, just think about, just look at the trees and see what you can find. So you're going to need some type of wood glue. So there's two choices here. There's Elmer's wood glue. Couldn't get the lid off, so I switched over to my Gorilla wood glue. I took the top off of this one. You can see it's really thick. It needs to be mixed up, though, because there's some liquidy parts. So I'm going to just mix that up with a little stick here. Make sure it's all the same consistency so we got no chunks. All right. So I'm just going to take the stick. And right here on the bottom, there's a piece where the bark wants to come off. I'm just going to put that bark back down. We have to do some work on this piece of pine bark before we can add anything to it because it's fragile. It's very fragile. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and stabilize as much as I can. And I'll show you how to do it. You see how that's loose there? I'm going to flip it over onto the back. And this piece, when I picked it up, I got the vacuum cleaner, I vacuumed it out, I used a brush, but you can see that it's still flaky. That's not dirt on the back, that's just part of the tree, part of the wood, so don't be distressed when you see those things. You gotta be willing to get your hands dirty for this project, y'all, you really do. So I'm just gonna go all down in those big cracks or fissures that are in this because I want it to be nice and strong and glued together well. I don't want anything falling apart because we're gonna hang this on the wall later, right? And you're gonna hang it up. You don't want it falling apart. So I'm stabilizing it. I'm gonna use Gorilla hot glue sticks all over here too. Once I've got the regular glue down there, I'm gonna smear it around on the top. Just to stretch it out, just to stretch it across there. And then we'll add a little more glue to it because we want to be sure that it stays once that's kind of settled. You know, hot glue, you got to move really quick with it because it'll get, it'll harden up on you and then you can't make anything stick to it. So you'll just add some more as you go along. It's not going to hurt you to use more glue here because I always tell y'all to save your glue, to just be careful with your glue. You don't need a ton. But these are the projects where you need to use more. You need to be generous with that. So just using some burlap strips, I'm just going to go and push that down into that wet glue all over the back. I did use four strips. Now moving on to the Dollar Tree door. I'm going to be using a variety of paints and I'm just showing you here what colors we're going to be using to work on this door. I want it to be a little bit different than the painting that's already on there. Um, it's fine the way it is if you don't want to do painting or you don't have the paints on hand, but I like to paint. I found that that is something that I enjoy doing and I like to see the transformation. So I have a variety of brushes also. Going to probably prefer to use smaller brushes in this project because you have some small detail work to do. So we're going to start off with the wood part of the door and I'm just going to use this chocolate brown and go all over the door. I'm using the chocolate brown because the pine bark is dark. So I want it to kind of uh, recess almost when we put it down on the bark. And you'll see what that looks like uh, shortly as well. You won't see me paint the whole thing, so don't don't exit, don't leave me yet, because believe me, you're going to want to hang around to see how this thing turns out. To make it a little quicker, you can use a hair dryer or a heating tool to dry between um, the, the areas that you paint. So once we've got all the brown where we need it, we just dried it. Now I'm going to go over my green and take that bright green down and just put more of a dark or a foresty type green on there in all the areas that are green. 
I'm going to change the colors of the flowers. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to show you when I do that. I'm also going to repaint the mushrooms and the steps. So it's all going to be a little different. So here's the transformation. This is how it looks now. I love that bright yellow in the window because it looks like it's lit up. Thomas Kincaid-like, I guess. All right. So it's been two days. My wood is stable. You can see that. Still little pieces will come off, but you can see what we have going here. This was so easy to do. It just takes the time. Remember, it's not hard. It just takes a little more time. Now I'm going to place the door right there. That little crack was perfectly made for a fairy door. I knew it when I saw it in the yard. So I am grabbing some wood glue. I'm going to put that in the center, and then I'll be using my Gorilla Glue sticks to go around the edge to make sure that this doesn't fall because although it is small, it does have a little weight to it. It's not plastic. Okay, so I'm going to place it down and I want to make sure that I leave um, edge around it that's open because we're going to add something to it. And then we're going to give a little ledge here with a mushroom. We want our little fairy to be able to come out and hang her little legs off the edge. And by the way, there won't be a fairy in this video, but the next video that I do with a fairy, you'll get to see her. I remade a fairy and oh my goodness y'all, I'm telling you, be watching for that video. Don't know what I'm going to title it yet, but she's amazing. So I'm going to use this glue and I'm going to go all around in the cracks, any place where it could drip down or where it needs to be closed. I want it to have very close contact to that bark. I'm going to take some of a moss mat and I'm just going to cut it down and I think that's going to look cute under there and then just glue that down. The hot glue is not going to bother the mushroom at all. The mushroom, if you've never felt one, feels almost like a very hard foam. They're lightweight. It's kind of hard to explain the texture to you, but I love them. I love mushrooms. I love stuff that grows in nature and I love the idea that even when things appear to be dead and appear to have no life at all that there's life that comes from it so mushrooms grow all those things will still grow the bugs will live in the you know will nest in, in there and trees are great places for birds some birds nest on the ground you know these are good little hiding spaces so what a perfect place for a fairy to hide right so I'm going to continue down, and since it gets more narrow on the bottom, I've decided to just do a little something more narrow down there on the bottom, just kind of going with the shape of this piece. Yours might not look like this, so again, my videos are for inspiration, and you can do whatever you want, and it won't be wrong if you like it, right? That is right. And I want to address a, a comment that I got in another video that I will never be like another, I won't say the name, um, but that will never be another whatever. I'm not trying to be anybody else. Um, I'm too old to do that. I'm not a copycat. There are so many ideas that people can have and crafters. It's not like an original idea. Most things that people make have already been made by somebody else. But I'm telling you now, I don't ever copy people. And if I use an idea or something that I've seen on another person's channel, I will tell you that. Otherwise, I do it myself, and I have not been watching a lot of craft videos because I don't want people to think that I just try to copy. No, I don't run off of anybody's gas. I do my own thing on my channel. I always make things my own. I try to be original, but if somebody else has already done it, that doesn't mean I copied them, right? I mean, do you get what I'm saying here? You get what I'm saying? So comments like that are just going to be deleted on this channel because... I keep this space as a positive, happy space, right? Yeah, we don't want to fool with all that negativity. We don't do that. So you can see that I've just glued moss all around that door. Love the look at it. You know, she's trying to have a little insulation around her home or him, you know, whichever one you like. And I thought it would be cute above to make maybe a little ladder going up to the top because maybe, maybe this little fairy doesn't always want to fly. She wants to walk too. She does have feet, right? So maybe they want to climb to the top and get a better look at everything. Maybe they want to climb up there and look into a bird's nest. Yep. 
they might want to check on their their friend bird right their friends fairies are friends with nature so we're gonna make life easy for this fairy I'm gonna give her a lot of options I'm just using those little sticks from Dollar Tree but you can use sticks from the yard cut down whatever I've had these for a long time I got them at the thrift store you can get them at craft stores I'm gonna use the smallest little pot and we're gonna make um, a little pot we're gonna make a little potted plant for the fairy sounds silly doesn't it but this is a fairy home we want her to feel happy here he or she so I'm just staining it with a little Waverly wax on a wet uh, baby wipe and I'm just going all around and then I'll go down into the inside slightly you can see how it looks looks a little dirty looks a little uh, woodsy I'm just gonna poke some moss down in there just like that and then we're gonna add some hot glue voila and then I'm just gonna take a little piece of a floral pick and just cut the little seeded section out or the little berry section out you can use little mini flowers you can use whatever you want to use here and I'm going to use a little bit of moss again trimming it off just giving it sort of a circular shape we don't want sharp points in nature right we have curves and things like that so this isn't a rock we want it to be nice and curvy and I'm going to put that right down here on the bottom And then we're going to add some up here on this, excuse the blur there, it was focusing on my arm. And we're going to tuck some moss right here. So I'm kind of going between the mat and then the, the thicker moss. Do whichever way you want and that's why I want to show you this, you know, whatever you like to use here. The scale of this is better to me than maybe Spanish moss because Spanish moss really grows hanging off of things. They don't grow in little clumps on the bottom. Um, but you could certainly use it around the edges if you wanted to. Or heck, use it however you want. We don't know. We know that uh, maybe our little fairies are crafty too and they like the Spanish moss. Just use what makes you happy, y'all. Then I'm going to be gluing some little extras here and there. And I forgot I had this little welcome sign, but it has a pink flower. So we're going to change it with a little sunflower yellow and some parchment white. And um, I got a tip that when you're painting, kind of stable, stabilize your hand to paint these things, and that has worked wonderfully for me. So whoever gave me that tip, thank you. I'm still learning to paint, but I really like it. And then the center will be yellow. Here's a little pack of mushrooms I got from Dollar Tree. We're gonna add those because the little house is like uh, the same color, right? Or the same type of mushroom, rather. The color's a little bit different. The dots on here are really small, and I wanted to make them bigger just because you know you do it your way you don't have to but I wanted to make these bigger so I'm just gonna go over with the tip of the brush the bottom and as big as the brush bottom is or the stick part of the brush is <laughs> that's how big the little dot will be and then let it dry I found this little bench at Dollar Tree I went over it with some Waverly white uh, some Waverly antiquing wax I mean and then I also redid the mushrooms just like I did on the other mushrooms and I'm going to place that down. Now she has a little picnic area on the side. Maybe she's growing herbs in that pot or she's growing some veggies. Who knows? And look, there's the bird nest that I alluded to earlier. We're going to add the bird nest. I'm just looking to see where it might fit best. And I think I like this little ledge right here. This is thrifted. You can make one with uh, moss if you want to. Or, you know, you could probably find one at Dollar Tree. Just gonna add it, let it sit there for a minute, make sure it's nice and, and in place. And then I'm gonna tuck some moss in the back of this little area. It looks like a little window seat or a little shelf. And I'm just gonna add some glue to some mushrooms and tuck those in there. We have mushrooms on top of mushrooms, y'all. We're using our imagination. I'll take a couple more of those sticks. Some of them had little branches off of them. So I thought that was cute and I'm gonna add those around the nest because he needs to be a little more stable, right? So I'm just gonna add one to the bottom section that hangs off and then one going upwards from the nest um, and upward to our little piece of art that we're creating. Now I can start with my turkey tails. 
when it gets hot here in Alabama, when it starts getting, and when I say hot, I mean consistently hot. It's been cool here and then warm and then cool and warm and rainy and then dry. But once it is consistently the right temperature for optimal mushroom growth, I will have a lot more variations of color in these turkey tails and in mushrooms. So be ready for that because I will definitely be showing you more crafts with those. Because, I mean, the best way, I mean, how much money do you think that I've spent in this piece of unique work here? Not very much money at all. What, maybe $4? Maybe $4. Then I'm going to add, I, I kind of like in the curvy areas, kind of want to add a little more. And if there's a piece of this bark that has a little bit of a lip um, that tucks under, it's the perfect place to add a little turkey tail or something like that. It rounds it out. It gives it something extra. But you can do whatever you like here. These, the texture of these is like a thick, papery texture. They're pretty tough, but you can cut them and you can uh, break them and tear them if you need to reshape them. And I want to add these here and there. So they do come, they will grow in a cluster, but most of the time when I remove it from the tree in order to keep from breaking them, I remove them in sections. So now it looks like they grew that way, right? Now I'm just changing it to make it look like that's the way they grew on the tree. We're gonna add some more mushrooms in here. You can see that my little welcome sign is up there with the little white and yellow. I like that it, it uh, matches a little bit better. And again, you don't have to repaint the pieces if you don't like. It's just something I enjoy doing. Let's tuck some around this little bird's nest for a little extra security. And maybe the fairy likes to sit on there, right? Maybe she's flying and she likes to light right there. I get lost doing these types of projects. Like I, it's that part of me that, and you know if you're a creator or a crafter, that it ideas just come to you and then you're working off of a thought and then you sort of start working off of emotion or intuition. It's like something, something else starts telling you what to do. Like the logic is gone and you just start moving by feeling. And that's how it works for me when I do these types of projects. I get lost in it. And that's kind of where I was here. But I think this looks cute. And if I was a fairy, I would definitely be digging this. Yes, this is prime real estate, folks. Prime. Look at it. I mean, y'all, this seriously, seriously, so cute and so fun to do. Are you getting ideas? Are you feeling inspired yet? All right, so we're gonna have to have a way to hang this up because it's not gonna be a project that lays down. So I'm going to take some of this little tube of whatever this is, and I'm going to tie three knots in one side and then we're going to do the same thing over here i just sped it up because nobody wants to see me do that slipping the knots right on top of one another to give us some bulkiness and then you're going to have a hanger that looks about like this you can see there this is now stable so i'm going to gently flip it over i don't want to break anything because you know it still can break and it still does flake off a little bit here holding it up with one hand. I'm gonna add hot glue and put the knot section right down in the hot glue, right on the back toward the top. Now I'm using this type of hanger because the weight may shift because of the size of this. So you wanna be able to have a hanger that you can move back and forth.
Love it. The next project is a bunny home. Okay, y'all. I went in my firewood pile and pulled out this beautiful piece of wood. Beautiful. I've got some scrap wood as well. These are just, I uh, cut them from the thrift store. And then some moss from Dollar Tree. These are just random scraps of picks that I had. And then these bunnies came from Timu. This video is not sponsored by Timu. They didn't pay me. I just went and bought these myself to see what the hype was. Love them. They're very cute. They're like a resin. And I am going to start off by adding some moss to this base. We're going to refer to this log underneath as our base. So I'm going to add moss here and there. And to me, the places that you would see moss are going to be the areas that have little pockets. It's little pockets where soil would gather when the wind blows and where seeds would collect and our spores, depending on what it is you're working with, you know. And I'm just going to lay those in those little areas. This natural wood makes it very easy to decide where to put this greenery. You can get a piece of log out of your yard. You can use whatever you like. You could do this on a wood round if you wanted to, but you wouldn't have the dimension that you would have on a natural piece of wood. So I am going to continue around, and some of this has uh, natural splits in it, and I guess when they were cutting it, it has some splits in it. Possibly the aging and drying process made it split more. Who knows, but I'm happy that it's there because it's great in a craft project. I couldn't imagine throwing this in the fireplace. What a beautiful piece of wood. Look at that texture and color. It is a stunner. I guess y'all could call me a tree hugger. Yeah, you could probably call me a tree hugger. That wouldn't make me mad. I love trees. Love them, love them, love them. All kinds of trees. Love to see the wind blow. Love to see the leaves fall. Love to see the, the leaves blooming and the flowers blooming on trees. Just love trees. Love them. Love wood. Love the texture. It's just beautiful and earthy and, you know, the trees protect our planet. They give us shade. They help with soil erosion. Trees are just awesome. Not to mention all the little bugs and critters that live in trees. Stunning. A natural piece that you could find anywhere to work with. And it's free. You don't have to pay for it. So these little pieces right here are called Farmhouse Witch Hazel. I got them from Dollar Tree. I can rarely find them, but when I do find them, I pick them up. There's a variety of colors I've seen. There is uh, this color green. I've seen white. I have seen pink, peach, mm, and maybe purple. As well as these little picks here. These little, they look like uh, cuckleburrows. They came from Dollar Tree, too, but I don't exactly know what those are called. And I only had two pieces left, but these are nice. I've used green with these, too. So I'm just going to go down in those areas where the moss is and kind of nestle these in here because we would like to think that where the moss is growing, there's some soil, and if there's soil there, then plants can grow from it, right? Plants or spores or, you know, mushrooms would be really cute in a project like this, too. And I want these to look like little, you know baby trees growing. If you saw my tour, my video um, of my property, you could see that there are baby trees just growing in there all over the place this time of year. So this is our perfect little make-believe representation of spring and the life that comes from the old. Then this is a pretty little pick. It's like a fern pick. I don't have enough of this, so look what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this in the shape of a fern tip. Now it's going to look more like a regular fern. Not bad. I'm going to pull them apart. You can use ferns, definitely, that you can get from Dollar Tree. They have really pretty greenery, um, I noticed this year in their spring section, or their floral section. And I just don't want to just jab this in here. I want it to look like a live fern looks. So by doing that, or by saying that, I want to give it a little dimension where the bottom two pieces are laying more downward and where this top piece is standing up a little bit more. And you can use that moss to help you um, secure your pieces. When you put your glue down, you can put the moss in there too, and that's going to help hold it in place. Look how this moss will help lift that up. Now see the dimension that we get doing that? Very easy thing to do. I want to put one little piece over here. 
And then this, if you know what this is, you can tell me because I'm not entirely sure. But it came in some stuff that I got from the thrift store and I had two pieces of it and I use it often in like my display at the end of my videos, which by the way, you will see the final results of all these in the end of the video, like I always do. But I thought they were just so beautiful, the texture in them, and it just looks like a nice little log that would be on the ground. And you can tuck moss down in the little, the holes in there. Nice little place for little creatures and little fairies and gnomes to hide, right? Gotta use your imagination. Let's add some bunnies in here. Let's start putting these down. This little bunny looks like he's coming out of a hole. So we secured him down in that moss, like maybe there's a hole underneath there. Can put a little glue on the back of the head you can put them on their bottoms to make them stick to the pieces around them and then i just decided yeah let's go ahead and put some moss in some of those holes why wouldn't it be growing there right tiny mushrooms would have been adorable here too so this is how it looks so far but you know what? It needs to look a little bit more springy, right? Let's make it look a little more springy by adding a bit of color to it. So I've just got it propped up so you can see what I'm doing here, where it's not laying flat. And I'm just going to pull the tops off of these. Now these also came from Dollar Tree. I only had one little piece of it left, uh, one stem. So using it whole is kind of overwhelming. It's kind of too big and not very realistic. So I am just going to tear the tops off or pull the tops off. You can layer them together like this if you would like, and then you can use them separately. Again, I'm tucking these around the little moss patches and in the little areas where there might would be some soil that's collected so that they could grow in it. A little more realistic that way, I think. And then I'm going to put my flowers down and then I'll glue it to my finger just like that. Not important. You don't need to do that. <laughs> oh boy. Protect your fingers, people. Please, please. I love you guys. I don't want anybody getting boo-boos because then you can't craft. You can't craft with sore fingers. Just be careful. You're just going to continue to add these here and there. And don't forget the back of your project too. Put little sneaky hideaway things back there. So when somebody turns it around expecting not to see anything, there's maybe a bunny popping out the backside or a flower growing out the backside, like it would if it was a little mountain, you know, or in a little hollow. You can use your tools to get the glue off. First project is going to be our mushroom trio. We're going to start off with some mushrooms. Mine are foam. I've used these in other projects. I love them. Little wood piece. That's going to be like a bottom or a base. Some little slices of wood. You can get these at Dollar Tree. A little bit of moss. And then some of this. Uh, ground cover moss and it's like in a little mat or a carpet. We're going to trim this off to make it a little bit easier to manage. It cuts off very easily. And then I'm just going to hold it in place and cut around it so I have exactly the right size. So once it is trimmed up, we're going to add some hot glue and then put this right down in place. Now I thrifted this little mat of uh, moss, so I'm not sure where it came from, but I'm, I am certain any craft store has it. Dollar Tree may even have it at this point. Just going to press it down nice and firmly, and then we're going to make a base for that. Just using this little piece of wood, looks like a little stump. We're going to put that underneath there, and that's going to be like a little riser. For our project. So I know that I like these three mushrooms and I want them to be together in a clump. So I am going to take my hot glue and put right down in the middle and in between all the little pieces I'll have little strings everywhere that I have to clean up. I'm gonna hold them together tightly for a couple of minutes. You won't see how long I hold it. 
but give it time to dry, then it's got a nice fat base for us to put it down on this project. If you are putting it one by one, you might want to try a different technique, but with this being so wide from the three of these, there's plenty of room for glue to hold it in place, but you're gonna have to hold it until that glue dries. Cause you see, as soon as I added glue, my little bundle tried to come apart. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of this Spanish moss. This just came out of my yard, but I think you can get this at Dollar Tree also, and you certainly can get it at craft stores. I'm just going to press it down in the glue around the bottom where it's connected. This just kind of gives it like a little base. You know, if you've seen mushrooms grow in the wild, they grow out of the ground and they just push everything up around it, almost like they're playing peekaboo. So maybe it pushed up through that moss. Who knows? Now these beautiful pieces of fern, actually each little piece that sticks out looks like a fern. So I'm just going to use those to my advantage and make these look like a full grown fern in a mini version, of course. So I'll pull off each little piece and use some glue here. You might want to use uh, some super glue or something that dries fast or use a cooler temp glue or just really be patient while each one of these pieces dries. You're going to have to help support them just a little bit until they dry. And you can pretty much tell when the glue turns cool that the glue is dry. It's just kind of what I go by. Now ferns grow sort of from the inside outward, almost like a little explosion. So you'll have a clump and then they roll outward. They have little um, little strands that grow up in little curls and then they stretch out and fall to the side. So that's what I'm doing with this fern, trying to make it look as natural as it would look in the wild. And someday, if you're interested, I'll take you for a walk around my yard and in the woods, and we'll look at the mushrooms that I have growing in my yard and all the little ferns and things that I have living in my yard because those things give me inspiration for my projects. And I think they might give you a little inspiration too. So this is how this looks. And I think it looks really pretty. I think this would be great on a tear tray if you're doing tear trade. If not, just sitting in your kitchen window or on your table uh, in a curio cabinet. You could set this down in the top of a mug or a wooden cup or bowl. You could put it in your dough bowl with some pine cones and other wild pieces that you found on your own nature walks. Next project is a garden lamp post. This one is my favorite. So if you've stuck around, I'm so glad to have you here. I'm going to use flat black paint. These little lanterns from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to use one of those. I'm going to use a variety of paints, mocha parchment and red, some paint brushes, some moss. This is just a little, like a crook that you can put a sign on. They came originally from Target. And some of these mushrooms from the same set as the flowers I used. And then a little miniature wreath. It's a grapevine wreath. So I'm gonna start by painting. We're gonna take a little of that latte and parchment and we're gonna mix those together. What we're gonna do right now is to work on the base of those mushrooms and I want them to be sort of a creamy beige color. I wanna make them solid white. I've never seen a mushroom that is solid white. It's not to say they're not out there in nature. They're just not in my yard. So I'm going to go over the bottom part, which is the underneath part of the mushroom and the stem. They have appropriate names, um, scientific names, but um, we're just going to go with the bottom of the cap and the little stem. How about that? So we'll do all those and let them dry. We're going to spray paint this. You can easily push this out. You just push on the top, turn it, and then the little light will pop out. So this will be painted completely black with the spray paint and the little loop on top also. I'm going to tear a piece of masking tape to fit over the bulb part of this light because it's going to get a spray of black paint as well. And I do not want my light to be affected. So we're just going to cover it up to make sure that it doesn't get any black paint on it. 
You want it to look like it's actually flickering. Now that the bottom has dried and our pretty little lamp or our little lantern is drying with its paint on it, we're going to add a little bit of brown to the red just so I have sort of a not so bright of a red but more of a, a richer deeper red. And I'm going to start painting the top. I want these to be similar to the other mushrooms that um, we crafted with the, the foam ones that are red with the little cream colored dots on top. I'm going to try to mimic that. So I'm just going to carefully and slowly go around the top of this and I'll do each one and I do get closer to the edge. I was just not very brave when I started. And then all of these will have a chance to dry absolutely completely before we move on with putting the dots on top. Because if you put white dots on the top of that, it is just going to bleed out and turn pink. We're going to work on the base, which is this little grapevine wreath here. And I'm just tearing up some of this moss. I think this is reindeer moss, maybe. And I'm going to start kind of gluing it down here and there on this wreath. I'm trying to find, like, if the back side's a little more flat, I try to kind of put that down in there and want to tuck it as if it is really growing in between there. We have live oak trees in our yard and there's uh, very pretty bright green moss that grows underneath the trees. It's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous when the light filters through on them. Mm. This is why I love woodland people. There's so, uh, so much magic and mystery and, and beauty in it. There's really beauty everywhere though. If you, if you take a chance, you know, you, you take the time, I, I guess is a better word for it, to sit out and look and just not stress about other things. You just kind of keep an open mind and just feel the sun and take your shoes off and put your, your feet in the sand when it's warm outside. Just kind of connect back with, with nature. It's a great feeling. It's a, it's a very refreshing, connected feeling. We're all part of the circle of life, right? We can reconnect. All right, so now I'm gonna take this beautiful moss-covered beauty and set it aside to work on our dots. I got it all mixed in. I don't want it to be completely mixed. I want it to, you know, possibly get a little more brown and a little more white in different sections. And I'm going to start adding the little dots with the back of my brush onto the mushroom. Rather than using a brush which could maybe splatter or fan out, if you use the end of the brush, just the plastic part, just dot it in there, then you'll get almost perfect little circles. Perfect for nature anyway. You'll do each one of these like this. You can use a pattern on each one or you can just kind of be all willy-nilly about it. Just put them wherever you want to. And I did find that if you add more paint to the brush or you keep adding it frequently, it does make it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you kind of run out of paint. They are not all the same size. That's okay. We can make them a little bit bigger. Just go right over the top. So here's my crook. It was not long enough. So I'm just going to use a piece of a floral pick and I just glued it on there and it had a little tape around it to hold it in place. And I'm going to take some more of that same strand of uh, pitberry vine and I'm going to wrap the vine around here because, you know, vines grow up. They attach to anything they can attach to and they just wind their way up. So I thought this would be a perfect place to put a vine. And put it around this little crook. If you can't find something like this, you can make it with a piece of metal clothes hanger. You can use some type of a wire. Um, you could use a tree branch instead of this if you wanted to that has maybe a fork in the top that you could hang your lantern off of. That would be really pretty too. Now I have the additional length and I need that so that when I hang up my lantern it doesn't sit on the bottom. It needs to have some space. And you can see here that I am gluing it in. I'm holding it where I want it and then gluing it. I'm going to glue it all around where the opening is that I have this stuck through 
and I put it in kind of a tight spot to help hold it still. You're going to hold it until your glue dries or you can use some clamps or something to hold it in place and that's what I decided to do. I'm going to get it positioned right, get these clamps on here in the right way and give that glue a chance to sit up nice and tight because I don't want this to move when we hang our lantern off the top. Perfect. So now we can start adding in the mushrooms. Part of this is going to be a little bit fuzzy because it wants to focus on the top of the crook there rather than focusing on the bottom, but it does clear back up. So when that happens, just beware, it does clear back up. Now I'm just taking the ends of the mushrooms where they will stick down where there's enough of a gap or opening around the little pieces of twisted vine and I'm just putting those right down in there. It's going to help hold it in place so that it doesn't fall over and it looks like it's just bursting and growing right out of that moss right out of that wreath. So I'll have a big one and a little one together and then I'll do another one like that on the other side. You can see it's a little fuzzy kind of in and out my apologies it's just what the camera does just gonna hold it hold it in place and one of my little flowers was falling over well my, my uh, mushroom I meant and then I'll add another one over here he's kind of peeking out underneath the cap and this is how it will look very pretty here is our black lantern and I've just turned on the lights you can get an idea how it's going to look when it's hanging I want to put this little sign in there were two signs that came with it so I'm just using a stick I'm gonna glue it in put some glue on the back of the sign and then hold that in place with a clamp so that we can move on to something else. We don't have three hands, so it's good to have a clamp to help us out. I'll take some more of that moss, and I'm not even gluing. I'm just tucking it in around where we push the candle back up through the bottom. And if you scratch any of your paint off when you do this, you can just take a black paint pen or a Sharpie and go over the spots where you knock the paint off. Simple, simple. We want this to look like it's been out in the woods for a while, and moss will grow on just about anything in the wild see the look of it so i thought yeah let's go ahead and extend it to the top and down some of the little sides so i'm going to start by just putting around the top little block it's kind of in sections up there on the top but i wanted to add just a little at a time until i had it the way i thought i would like it best and see so i have some going down the sides on this corner and on this corner and that really changes the look I think that is a really pretty look we're gonna add some more of this vine to this lantern so I'm going to wrap it around the stick to look like it has wound its way up and then I'm just gonna wind it around two of the sections of the lantern on the outside not on the same piece that has the moss growing downward but on the piece beside it you know what I mean? Because I don't want to cover up the work I've already done. So I'm just winding this around. It just takes a minute. And I don't even have to glue it in place. But of course, if you want to, you can. Oh, so pretty. I wish I had a little fairy to put in here. It would be so gorgeous. I'm going to have to get some fairies. If y'all have fairies that you use with crafting, could y'all please tell me where you bought them? You know, if you like them, if it's a good quality, I would love to get some little fairies and some little good quality garden gnomes, other than what you see at the Dollar Tree. I mean, they'll work. If, if I need to use those, they will definitely work. But I want something that looks a little cleaner and a little more crisp. Pretty, pretty. So then, of course, let's just put a little more of those pieces of vine down here in the grapevine wreath. All you have to do is cut off a couple little sections and wrap it around your wreath. You don't have to use a small wreath, so if you don't have a tiny wreath like this, get a big one. You know, you can get a big one. Or you can wrap moss around a small round one. You know, like a, um, the foam ones, or maybe make one out of a pool noodle. And then wrap it with some moss. That would be pretty. Maybe paint it brown first.
Today, we're going to make a fairy swing first. You get to meet the new fairy. As promised, I have a fairy here to make over for you. She is on a swing. I love this. This little thing came from Dollar Tree. And she's just attached to her little seat there with just these little pieces of, of jute. Going to need some type of uh, greenery mat or some moss. A dome. You don't have to have a pedestal, but some type of a cloche would work. I'm going to paint this black one a different color because we're going to have her sitting up here. Make sure that whatever you're going to be using is tall enough to hold in that tree. So I'm going to use this green and the stone on here. I'll spray it with green first, let it dry with one coat, and then I'll do two coats of that brown. Okay, so I'm just going to need to cut this out a little bit smaller than the diameter of the opening of that cloche because we want to be able to set it down in there. You can easily take these off by just a little gentle pull and they'll come right out. There are two little spots there with glue in them where they were glued down. So we'll use that same spot and we will uh, put the ropes back in those when we get finished making her over. So she's cute, but get a good look at her right now and see her wings are not symmetrical and she's kind of sloppily painted, but that's okay. You know, for $1.25, I can't really complain. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue back to the tips so that they will be nice and pointy and easy to put back down into her little seat. You can see the green spray paint on my hands. Okay, so we're going to make her over, and I'm going to use a bunch of little brushes to do this. I'm going to use this light gray for her wings and this little glitter to go on her wings. I'll use some sunflower yellow, one of my favorite yellows, y'all know. That's what her top will be. I want to deepen up that purple skirt with this Concord purple. And then she's going to be a pale princess like me. So we're going to use a light skin tone color for her. But you can paint yours any color you like. I'm just going to use my little cutters here to just make sure that I can get those wings more symmetrical. I'm just looking at them from the back and kind of uh, clipping at them. They're just resin. They'll cut without shattering. And then use my nail file to go over the rough spots so that we don't have too much thickness. You know, kind of narrow it down. And then I'll wipe it off and start adding the paint. You're not, I won't bore you with watching me paint the whole thing, but just look how careful you need to be when you are painting um, if you're going to do a little makeover. You just got to be really careful with a small brush. Take your time and go over all the little spots. I'm just starting off with her wings. They they're, um, take up a lot of room, so I thought I would just start with those first. Might be the easiest thing to paint making sure I get close to her body because some of that paint has um, from her clothing is on her wings and I just want to clean that up make it look a little more crisp and this really does do the trick for it I think so you're gonna do the back to both wings do the back make sure that um, this is kind of textured so I'm just making sure that I get in all the little grooves and the little circles and dots that are on her wings any place that was this uh, dirty white color, I'm just going to go over and do the sides too, do underneath, you know, the whole point of making it over is to make it better. I'm going to use some antiquing wax, just a little stencil brush, and add some paint, I mean add some of that wax and kind of offload it. And then I'm going to just add it to the tree just because I prefer a darker color. So I'm just going to deepen it up and every part of this trunk is going to get a coat of this. You don't have to do this or you can use paint if you don't have antiquing wax you can certainly do that. You can use a furniture repair marker if you want to do that you know if you do like to add some color and I went over every piece so all the little stumps and underneath where the flowers sit. So here's our little girl once she is painted and her paint is dry. Still gotta do some work though. Let's put some magic in her wings. So I'm going to use this Mod Podge. 
and it's just a glossy Mod Podge. You can use whatever you have, but I thought since I'm using glitter, this might help keep it nice and sparkly. So I'm going to carefully go over her wings here, but I'm not going to get it anywhere except on the wings because I want all the magic to be right there. I don't want to completely dust her with uh, glitter, you know, and keep it in her hair and all that. I want it to all be, well, I can't say realistic um, necessarily, but in my mind, I have a certain look I'm going for. But if you like your little fairy to be completely covered in pixie dust, then you can certainly do that. So, while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm just going to dump this glitter on her. You can use whatever type of glitter that you like. And after I get the front and the back of her wings done, this is how she'll look. I'm going to take a thin paintbrush and go inside each center of those flowers. And then I'm going to start adding and dumping off just like I did with her wings. This is the look that I'm going to get, and I think this is much better for a woodland look. And I'm going to add some glue. Now, I need to work quickly here because it's a big surface area and hot glue will dry fast. So I'm just pushing that glue stick in there as I am directing the glue down and it pours out faster that way. Probably not really good for the glue gun, but it was good for the project. I'm going to mash it around all the way around and then if there's any area there that is hanging over I'm just going to take my scissors and clip that away. Now I got this moss mat uh, at Goodwill. I've looked these up on Amazon and they're like $14. So I was very blessed to find what I found. Okay so just to have her a place to stay while she dried I just put a little hot glue on this little piece of wood just to make sure she wouldn't fall over and I'm going to pull her off of there. She made a clean break, came right off. And you can spray um, the tree and her if you want to with a little bit of a clear sealer to keep the glitter in place if you would like. I certainly did do that. Okay, I like the look of this. I think the tree was really painted just fine. And I don't mind the pink and white on top. I think it looks really pretty like little cherry blossoms. So we need to put her back on her swing, right? So I'm just going to, I'm not going to burn this because I'll have wax and all kinds of stuff on it. So we're not going to do that. But I'm just going to trim off a couple of the little strands, little flyaways that were making a mess. And you see here on the side, you can see where the holes are. I'm going to add a little bit of my hot glue right down in there. Do the same thing here. I found it was a little bit easier just laying it down. And then put, because we put the glue on there, it'll push right back down into that little that little bowl, I guess you could call it. I'm going to put on my spectacles and work on putting that right into her hand. She's got to hold on to her swing, right? That's what we do. We don't just sit in there. So we're going to put just a little tiny dot. This would be... These little miniatures like this probably be best to have like a one of those glue guns that it's a like a fine tip or a fine detail maybe um, glue gun. I don't have one of those, but my glue gun works just fine for this. And then she's back in action. Look at that. And even when I rock it hard, she's still pretty safe there. And this is how it's going to look before we put them in their new little playground. We're gonna put her in her garden. So we're gonna make a little garden up here for her. And y'all later on, we're gonna make her house. So stay tuned for the second one too. I'm gonna to put this back down. You can see it sets down in the little cracks where the moss is. Everything fits great. Still got some clearance. I'm gonna add a mess of hot glue here and press it down. And I'm gonna press it down and hold it in place for quite a while. I just cut that out so you don't have to be bored with all that. But now that she's glued in place, we're going to start dressing up the inside. Keep in mind, you want to keep your florals and whatever you put in here to the inside. And you want to make sure that they are not higher or not much higher than the top of that little tree. Because if it is, it's going to bend when you put the cloche back on top. So I just love these little, I think they're like little snapdragons, but you got to hold them in place. You see the one fell over there in the top corner? 
I'm going to pick that back up because the glue is still, is still, uh, you know, hadn't cooled off yet. So I'm just going to hold the two in place, both of them. I recently got these on a garland from Goodwill, and I will be doing a haul for y'all. So just, you know, I haven't forgotten. I will be getting y'all a haul out. And I pulled these off because the fern is just so delicate and beautiful. And it's not like the other fern that I have. So now I've got a little variety I can mix up in there. It's just angelic looking to me, like a dragonfly wing. I hope that y'all are enjoying these little whimsical creations that we're making this summer. I am a fair skin girl. I stay inside, or at least in the shade, a lot in the summertime because I am... Uh, fair skin and I blister and also because I am in menopause full-blown menopause ladies holla if you hear me because this is a pain in the rump but you know it is what it is so I'm just going to use my imagination this summer and spend a little time indoors being playful so some of these projects that you see me put out are not the typical thing that you find on my channel from the beginning but you know, if you're here for something that's a little more realistic, a little more rustic, it's coming. I promise you it's coming. I just wanted to do a little bit of this first. So I'm just adding in leaves and pieces of wood here and there. Now those pieces of wood came from the Dollar Tree in a little mesh bag, and it's where the sand and the shells are. If you don't have something like this, get you some good cutters go out in the yard go into a public park pick a branch up off the ground i mean don't let's not let's not prune anybody's bushes back here but if it's on the ground you know cut your stick up into little pieces and uh use those you can also when you have these little fern picks you can trim them up get them exactly the right size that you like them so that's what i'm doing here and I love that this little fern, uh, it comes in like a darker green and a lighter green. No worries if y'all don't have this on hand already. You can typically get some type of a fern or some greenery at Dollar Tree. And in the next project, I will be using some greenery from the Dollar Tree. So you'll be able to see the options that you can get from there too. This is kind of like her playground, her park, her little secluded place that she likes to go and just relax and unwind after doing her fairy business all day. So I've got this exactly like if I was a little girl, how I would love to have my swing. So these little mushrooms came from Timu. I am not sponsored by Timu, but I bought some of these because they're so tiny that for these little bitty projects, I thought, you know, they would definitely have a place in my crafting supply. I like to put different sizes together just for a little more interest. You can definitely get little mushrooms from the Dollar Tree, um, from Dollar General is what I'm being told, and you can definitely get them from craft supply stores. Try, if you're going to go to a craft supply store, to get things on sale or with coupons. Or maybe even at holidays, if someone asks you what you want for a gift, you could tell them that you would like a gift card. And you can use a gift card to go get your stuff. So this is how it looks so far. I know that when I am making it from the top down, you can't always see what's going on. So I will show you all the way through what I am doing. I love that the purple and the yellow match her clothing. It's so cute. When you have glue webs, you can just use a blow dryer if you wanted to and just, you know, kind of go over it gently and just, it'll melt those right down. So now let's work on the cloche. I'm going to use a little bit of this green moss from Dollar Tree. I'm going to put it right around the little center on the top. Now this did come from, uh, this cloche came from Dirt Cheap. I forgot to tell y'all. But you can get any cloche that you want anywhere that you can find them. I'm going to add that down in the middle, and that's going to make a little topper. The next project is a mushroom home. Let's see where she lives. All right, so we could pretend she's on a secluded island. Here is her little home. This came from Dollar Tree, and y'all, I was very impressed. There's a little bit of spray over on the larger part of the mushroom here, but otherwise, I'm not going to change anything. This is another piece of that wood that I found in the yard. We're going to use this. 
I got this at the thrift store, and I knew that I could use this wooden piece over again. Now, the bird's beautiful, but I don't like that it's turned yellow. Moss mat or moss, some more greenery of your choice, and then little sticks and pieces of wood from your yard or from Dollar Tree. First, I've got to get the, I could either use the backside or the front. If you're going to use something that's glazed over like this or has some type of a covering on it, sand it first, wipe it down, and then dry it off. I'm also going to be using Gorilla Glue Sticks to make this project stick together. So I have remnants left of this piece of mat because I've been using it a lot in these projects, these whimsical projects. And I'm just going to trim it down into pieces that will work on this. Now what I love about this and the other moss mats that I have found is that once you get them in place, you can just take your fingers and run over the little gap and you won't even see that it was pieced together. So you know you just kind of like brush it with your fingers like if you were scratching your dog's back with just the tips of your fingers without your nails. You know you got to do that little motion and it kind of makes the fibers go together so you can't even tell. Because you're going to see, see the gaps here and there? I'm going to piece those together with little bits and pieces also. All those little pieces lay in there. I'll be using those to fill in those gaps and you won't even know. Look at that. You can't even tell. And then right now what I'm doing is just getting off any stray glue you know that's on there. I don't like that so I'm making sure that's right. Then I'm going to find the placement for her home. I love the sizing and that this little piece of wood looks like it was made for this mushroom. Look at the fit. That's perfect. This, this video was meant to be made. She was meant to live here. So I started taking off this tag and then I thought why? It's just going to be stuck down. Nobody's going to see it. So I'm just going to leave it and add a good bit of glue like we did on the other one and then press it down into the fibers. I'm going to hold it there until I feel like it's been there long enough. It's not moving around when I shake it. Then I'm going to fit this where I want it, grab my glue gun, and while it's sitting there, I'm going to work on, so you can see how it fits so great right there. We're not going to be covering this, so placement doesn't really matter. I just generally like to put the back of my projects toward the back so that I have more space in the front, you know, to play with. And then I'll just go in with my glue gun. I'll make sure that there's glue that is between my mushrooms and the wood. That'll make it a little more stable. And then the pieces of the wood that is touching the bottom, I'm going to add glue there to make sure that that stays nice and stable. I don't want anything to fall over because this little beauty I'm going to keep for some time. Love it. Just put it where you need it. I'm trying to be careful with the glue. I don't want a bunch of glue spilling out. I don't want it to look sloppy. I want it to look neat, and I don't want you to be able to see it. So I'm trying to be precise where I apply my glue. Okay? Now you can see here, I'm moving my hand so you can see that it is all down on that piece. Love the look of this so far. So cute, just like this, I think. All these little nooks and crannies were just made for some moss to live and some little plants to grow, right? So I'm taking some scraps of that mat and just pressing it down into a little hot glue. You can see here how that works. You could put a tiny bird nest there. You could add more mushrooms. I'm going to play around with this fern and add some more in here. And I'm just going to make a bunch because I personally don't really see once, like in the summer, when ferns are growing, they're usually in clusters. Now in the beginning, you might see one little frond by itself. But for the most part, frond? Is that the word? Piece of fern. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a palm frond. Yeah, but um, yeah, you, you'll see them in little clusters. So I'm just going to make them sort of like in a little cluster here. Because this is a summer project, right? Well, it could potentially be a summer project. I'm not going to use any flowers in here, y'all. None. This is all going to be greenery and kind of natural looking. So look at these. This came from Dollar Tree. It sure did. And there are caladiums in here and all kinds of stuff that I can't even name. But they're on wire, which makes the quality of them fantastic if you're going to be using these. Because I don't want them to be flat. You can bend these out and you can arrange them a little bit so they look like they do when they grow. 
and they grow out from the center and fall to the side. That's how they look. Well, the heads of the flowers fall to the side. They stand up. So I'm going to use a little bit of my floral wire here to twist them together. And then I'm going to trim off because I want this to be flat. When it's flat, it makes it easier and you have a little more surface area to put your glue so that um, it will stand up a little bit better. That's just my experience. So you see that they're wired and you can just bend them and look how much nicer that looks. Looks more realistic. I'm going to grab some of my floral tape. Y'all, when you use floral tape, I know a lot of people do not know. When you start twisting it, put some tension on it. You can see how I'm putting tension on the tape. When you pull it, it releases the wax, which makes it sticky, and it makes it stick to itself. Continue to put pressure and twist this, okay? Put as much on there as you like, and you can just tear it off when you get to the end. Now, I've had some glue right down in that crack, so I'm just gonna place this down right on top. Now, it could be to the side, it could be behind, wherever you wanna do it, but I'm gonna add a little more glue here to kinda make it stand up. I grabbed a piece of greenery from my little greenery bucket or basket where I have a bunch of scraps, and I thought this would be something a little bit different. We'll put some fur in there, a cedar or fir, whichever tree this is, and I'm gonna add that. And then the little pieces, I'll just put here and there across the top, just to fill in a bit. And add some to the back, you know. I like to do my projects where you got a little something surprising going on in the back. Even though there's not, a much, not much room, you wouldn't think there would be, but I still like to do it because it's always surprising to turn it around and find those little hidden areas. So this is it so far. Gotta keep y'all informed, keep showing you. This came out of another pack from Dollar Tree. It's a little mailbox, and I thought this would be really cute, but I'm instead of putting it close to the house, I'm going to put it right underneath a little depression in that wood, in a little nook. I'm going to add some more greenery over here. This is so pretty, and Dollar Tree, y'all. Okay, now this I thrifted recently. These are little bits of cork. And they look like little rocks or little pieces of gravel, but they're really lightweight. Let's give her a walkway. I'm going to go right in front of the house, the same width as the little stone that's there on the bottom. And hey, y'all, use whatever little house that you like. If you want to use something different, a little cabin or whatever they have at Dollar Tree, you can just use that. I'm going to add some hot glue, or it might be easier if you're using your fingers to put that on a cool temp and just pack that down and press it into that mat underneath and into the glue. I'm gonna extend it all the way to the edge of this little plaque or her little island. All the way to the edge. Maybe this is her tropical getaway. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I would live here for sure. I love to be surrounded by green and woods and mushrooms and goodness love it and then I'm gonna make it almost like it rolls down or bevels down on the edge and then we're gonna make her some little steps even though she flies sometimes she walks I'm gonna take a few pieces of that wood and I'm just gonna do like small medium and large so that the smallest step is on top it's gonna fit right there underneath that I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bottom and the second step on there and then I will choose and place the top step. It doesn't take long for this part to dry. It's going to take a little while for the cork to dry, so just be patient with that. But it is all covered, and it will stick down. I tried to shake off the excess, and nothing moved. It all stayed right there. How cute is that? Yes. You can use gravel or you can use anything that you have if you want to make a little a little walkway. You can even use those tiny little bits that you get out of like um, a fish aquarium. You know how they have the little colorful stones or little rocks? That would be really cute. I guess they call it gravel. I'm not sure. But that would be really cute for like a, a really magical fairy look. I always have these garden fairies and the, the ones that are woodland fairies, you know? But you do whatever you like best. 
Then I added some of that cork around the bottom of the mailbox just because I liked it. See, we got some stuff going on in the back and the front. I love it. I'm going to add some more moss in the other little areas. I always like to take a good look at the whole project up close, far away, back front, side to side, and just let my imagination run wild. I just add stuff where I want to and you know, you don't have to do this much if you don't want to do this much. But it just makes my heart so happy. I, I feel like a kid doing this. And y'all, I just turned 50. On the 31st of March, I turned 50. And I don't, I, it doesn't bother me one bit. You know, it doesn't. I feel good for 50. I do. Look at that. That's cute so far, right? So we're going to place another little piece of wood over here because maybe she needs a bench where she can come out and contemplate before she takes a little, a little fly over to her playground so she can sit in her swing. And then of course if there's a tree stomp down we got to have something living by it, right? Let's just add a little more right there. Look at her house, y'all. Wouldn't you like to live in a house like this? She's a good keep housekeeper and she's a good little gardener too, isn't she? But she works so hard, she has to have a rest so that she has her little garden where she can go sit in her swing and think about her hard day's work. These projects bring me so much joy and I hope they do you too. Oh, mm. okay. So I got this piece of wood out of our yard after we had a tornado. It's beautiful. I love the characteristics of it. It fell out of one of our trees and I just brought it in the house and set it aside and let it completely dry out. I love this. So I'm just going to take a brush, just a soft brush. I'm going to go all the way over it and make sure that I get off any loose sand or dirt or particles or anything that are in there. Um, this has been in the house for quite some time. It was on the porch first. There are no bugs, so y'all don't worry. I don't bring any mites in the house or anything. In order to use this, I've got to have a way to stand it up. And I'm going to use just a piece of this wood that I have out of a, a little bag that I got at Dollar Tree. And I craft with them quite often but this is better than a block because it kind of matches what we have going on here so I'm just gonna add some hot glue and some wood glue hold these together and then I'm gonna put them in front of a fan and let them dry overnight now it's nice and clean and it will stand up just like this and this is how I want it I want this to look like sort of like a little wrap around cave type you know like there's okay i gotta just be honest with you when i was a kid i believed in fairies and to me what a beautiful little fairy garden what a little hidden area for some wildlife right or some mystical creatures some cryptids or something like that okay so this is where i was going with this take a piece of foam just chop it down just uh, what i'm doing is just using my my metal ruler here to just kind of shave off the edges shave off the bottom till I get the shape that I want that will fit on that piece that's on the bottom so the underneath side of this little block um, section of wood that I have here I'm gonna add some hot glue to it quite a bit because I don't want this coming off I'm gonna be adding some things to it and I don't want it to fall to pieces I'm gonna add it back down there on that area where I wanted it and yeah, there's still gonna be some flake in here and there, but this is a, a real piece of wood. It's not plastic or anything, so that happens in, in nature. 
All right, and then once it is dry, you can see how it looks. I'm going to take some clear school glue and a foam brush, put it all over the top of that foam, and then I'm gonna grab some floral moss from Dollar Tree. This is not reindeer moss, this is floral moss, and it is in individual pieces. It looks like a sheet of it, almost, when you see it in the bag, but absolutely not. These are individual little fibers, and it is very messy. So cover your surface and be prepared to have some cleanup. But it's so worth it. I needed it in here. We have live oak trees in our yard, and I'm telling you that moss grows underneath them in the shade, and it is absolutely beautiful. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to add glue and moss as I need it on this piece. You're gonna get this on your fingers. It's quite a mess. All right, so you can see here, there's a little area here. I'm sorry, my camera is trying to focus on what's in front, but I'm just gonna add some more clear glue back there in that little nook and then tuck in a little more of that green moss. So you see where we're going here. You can see the idea of what we're doing here. Now you can get a log out of the yard and do this. You can go for a walk in nature and find something that you like. You could use a piece of driftwood. Look at these beautiful mushrooms. These are foam. They came on a garland that I got at Goodwill. I have never seen them. I don't know what store they come from, so I can't help you with that. But I can tell you that there are foam mushrooms if you can find them at Dollar Tree. That's what I was looking for for y'all, but I found these and these are even better. So you can very easily put a stick or a piece of wire into the bottom and use that to put it down on your projects. You don't wanna be trying to hot glue them because they're top heavy and it's gonna make a mess. It's, they're just gonna fall over and you're gonna be frustrated. It would probably even melt. So starting at the top back, I'm gonna add my tallest mushroom. And then I'm going to choose, because I have a box of mushrooms with a bunch of different shapes. They're the same color, the same color, but some are flat on top, some are curved, some look like a hamburger bun, some look like a little dome. And I want to use a variety of them. You don't, you can see mushrooms individually, certainly, but most of the time, you know, mushrooms are going to grow in groups or in little clusters, little fairy circles. So, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to put them where they look like they're coming out of one localized area. And then I picked this one. It's a little bit different. Looks like it has little splits in the top to go right there. So it's kind of a little step down, you know, process. There are a bunch of different heights and they're really, really, oh, they're just beautiful, y'all. I have a little bag of leaves and I don't know where I got these from. Uh, you can get stuff like this at Dollar Tree though. I cannot remember where I got them from. I've had them for a long time. I collect fall items and Halloween. You should see my basement. Okay, so now I'm just going to start adding down colors that I think are really pretty that would coordinate. I'm using oak leaves here because this is likely a piece of oak um, that I am using. That's the kind of trees we have. That's where it fell. So I assume that that's probably what it is. It might not be. It could be pecan for all I know, but we're going to pretend like it's oak. And then I'm just going to put different colors of the leaves together in little clusters, you know, as they would be as they fell from a tree. I have some gorgeous eucalyptus from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to cut the little thick part off so it will fit. And I'm just working in the little nooks and crannies again in, the, um, in this log or this piece of wood. That's how things would grow. And uh, obviously the leaves are not growing, but this is how they would fall. They would fall into little spaces and... I like the natural look of that. I'm telling you, if you're new to my channel, rustic is my jam. I love rustic. I love woodland and rustic and nature and mystical things and, oh, I just love it all. So I'm going to continue along and I'm just going to put these pieces down here and there. Use whatever you have. If I had some of the fall looking ferns, I would have used those here as well, but I don't currently have anything like that so that's why I didn't use it but it would be beautiful in your project if you want to use it so you can kind of see where we're going here on the project I like that there's a space and it kind of branches out away from the rest of it and it has its own little area I think that's cute I went and found some of these little foam acorns they um, 
I believe came from the thrift store and I'm just gonna add those here and there because that's another thing you know acorns do fall not far from the tree so we'll let those we'll just say they fell down in there too and I actually did lose one and it's gonna roll out up oh, there it is and then we're gonna put some on the top I'm so sa glad that I saved this piece of wood because there's so much character in it. It's so beautiful. Am I the only one? Are you looking at this and going, what in the world is this woman talking about? Or are you thinking, this is just, my little heart is happy right now. Like the cottage core little heart is just so joyful right now. Y'all could get your little, your little fairy garden stuff and poke it in here. You can get you some of those little Dollar Tree fairies or gnomes and you could place those down in here too. How cool would that be to do with your kids or your grandkids? There's something so sweet and innocent and mystical about that to me. And this just looks like the perfect little place. The perfect little place to hide away. So I'm even gonna go on the back here. There's some holes, you could put a leaf in there, you could put a branch in there, you could you know, put some of this eucalyptus in there, whatever you wanna do. But there was a little, little crack in the back and I thought, you know, that would be cute, let's put it there. Do you like this? I'm really loving this. Okay, so now we're gonna use string lights. Check your string lights before you put them on your projects. So you don't get frustrated once you've either glued it down or taped it in place. Check your lights first. And you can get string lights at Dollar Tree. Pretty sure that's where this string came from. You can get it on copper or silver, I do believe. Mine just happened to be on silver. Okay, so you're just going to tuck these around in the back and around the foliage that's in there. You can go in between your mushrooms if you would like to. You can go underneath the leaves, which is what you're gonna see me do. And I'm not actually gluing my lights down, but I'm gonna take a little bit of glue to glue the leaf down so that it will help hold my wire in place. And that's easy to do. I don't wanna glue too much of my greenery down other than one section of it because I want it to look like it has some movement and it has some life in it, you know? When a leaf falls, it's kind of curly. Maybe some's on the ground and some's kind of curled up in the air. I like that. I want to leave that character there. I want to try to make this look, you know, as it might would look in nature. You know, minus the string lights running through it. But we're, we're, we're making this magical and mystical, so we need some of those fairy lights. Yes. I'm going to show you two ways. So this is the first way you can wrap it. Just kind of focus just around those mushrooms and just right there in that section. And you can see how pretty that would be. Or since we have two, we have a long piece here and the wood is longer, you could actually extend the end of that wire outward and just kind of wrap it around so that it goes down to the bottom all the way down to the end so that you include every bit of the greenery in there you know you could do that if you wanted to very easy to tack down not a problem this is how it would look that way if you wanted to do it that way that's also pretty and you don't have to glue down your um your battery pack because when you sit this down it's going to sit behind the biggest part and you'll, you won't be able to see it. Ideally this would be against the wall since everything pretty is on that side of it. But I decided to keep my light centered around my, my mushrooms and so that's what you see here. That's what I have done here.
For project number one, we're going to make a North Pole snow globe. So taking one of these little snow globes from Dollar Tree, we're going to use also some little candy canes. I have some a snow sheet here, some little cobblestone corner pieces for our scenery inside, and some little bottle brush trees, tiny so they'll fit. And this was on clearance at Hobby Lobby, or it was 60% off, I think, in the fall. A pool noodle and a knife. Also going to be needing some snow in there. And Mod Podge. So we're going to look at our three ornaments. These are going to be the, are the little figurines that we're going to put inside. They are two elves and a little bridge. I'm going to take this inner piece out. This is, I believe, so if you have water inside of it, you can keep it from leaking out. We won't be needing that. We're going to throw that paper away. And then we have our cute little globe. For the top, we are going to be cutting a pool noodle to fit on the inner circle of that lid. So I'm just cutting it off. First time using this little knife, and I am impressed. It's very good. And we're going to put this down in here. You notice that the pool noodle does not extend all the way to the sides. It still leaves a lip around there so that the, uh, the dome can fit back on the inside. And that's what you want. Be sure you scoot it around so you still have room to screw it back down. I'm going to cut one more little piece here and put that right in the center. Just going to cut it and then just tear a piece off. So we have a nice solid platform now. You can add a little hot glue there also to hold it in place. If y'all don't have a pool noodle, you can use floral foam, you can use foam out of packages, whatever you have. I'm just gonna turn it upside down on this sheet snow and just cut this out so that I get close to the right diameter I'm gonna need. We need to leave a little bit extra so we can tuck it down into the lid. You can also use an automotive cloth for this, whatever you have that you want to use. And I'm going to start pressing it down here just with a little, I don't know if this is part of a skewer or what this is. I pick these little wooden pieces up all the time because they're, they're good to have for little crafting tools and for projects sometimes. Now I'm just using the point of that and just pressing it down in there. It's wood so it, um, it holds on to the, that fabric a little bit and it helps to tuck it into place. I'm just going to tuck it and push it way down in there because remember it's threaded and we want to be able to screw that dome back on it. So just press it all down in there. You don't even need glue to hold it in place unless you just want to do that. And just to be sure, yes, it fits right back on there. So now I am going to be making a bit of a mess with snow. I'm going to put it down on a tray that I have and I'm going to use some Mod Podge and a brush because I need a, a pretty good thick amount, I guess. So you can see I'm putting it on here kind of thick because I want it to go down into this fabric and really grip onto the snow that we put on here. So I'll take a mixture of some salt and some faux snow and put that right here. Press it down, and then you can turn it over and tap off the excess. We're gonna save all that snow and we'll keep using it. Perfect, we didn't get any down in that little crack, so it fit back on there perfectly. Now I wanna add a little bit of embellishment to this lid. So I'm using these pieces from Michaels. I got them at the thrift store, but it does have Michaels on the packaging. I believe you can get these up in the front near the registers. All those little bins of inexpensive um, items, I believe that's where this comes from. So I'm just gonna put it right up toward the top. I'm gonna put a little pressure on it as I pull it and then push it down onto the, the lid. It's pretty grippy. Um, the adhesive that's on the back works really well. So I'm not gonna worry at this point in trying to secure it with glue, but you can do that if you want. Once I get back to the original spot, I'm gonna trim it off and push it down. So it looks like one continuous band all the way around. And I like that it's kind of iridescent, looks kind of snowy to me. And then this one that looks a little bit like eyelet, I'm just going to overlap it on the bottom of that other ribbon. 
Same procedure, just adding a little tension because it helps me keep my line straight and kind of angle where I want to put it down. I'm going to go all the way around, overlapping the thickest part of the eyelet, eyelet um, whatever this is, and then let the little curved parts hang underneath. Makes a pretty little embellishment, I think. When you get back to the front, you just cut it off, and I think that's cute. I think that'll make a nice little display. Now the candy cane is way too big. You can use whatever candy cane you have, whatever pole. Get creative with what you use. You can paint something, paint a stick if you need to. I cut this in half so that it will fit in the dome. And I'm going to use the pole rather than the candy cane tip because we're going to make the North Pole. So this is going to be our North Pole. And this just came off of something I got at Goodwill. Probably a, it's probably a knob of some sort. And I'm just going to use a little hot glue and press the stick right into it. So it looks a bit like the North Pole, right? I think so. But get creative and do your own thing here. I'm going to find my center spot, push down a little bit, and then using my scissors, I'm gonna kind of dig down into that foam that's underneath so I have a little hollow spot so that this will securely stand in there because you won't be able to just stand it up with glue and expect it to stay. It's gonna fall over. So then I'm gonna flood that little spot there with some glue press it down and then hold it in place until it can stand on its own. Just takes a bit for the glue to cool off. On the bottom, I'm gonna use some drips, almost like ice or where the snow has kind of piled up. I'm just gonna do that with the glue gun and then quickly before it dries, I'll add some more of that mixture to it and tap off the excess. You can add more, you can have some hanging down from the top, whichever way you like it. And Cobblestone corner or whatever that uh, the name is of these little figurines, you can get a bunch of different kinds. And if you don't want to use the cobblestone corner stuff, you can always get the little garden gnome um, pieces or the fairies and you can use those in here. Okay, once I am satisfied that it is secure, I can go on to the next project or the next step in the project. And these are kind of, I really like the quality. They're not resin. They have sort of they're like a soft rubbery kind of, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, I'm able to use my cutters to clip into it and make the bases smaller. The bases really need to be smaller in order for you to fit all this stuff on here. And then in the end, I decided not to use the bridge on this because I wanted to use my trees. So for the trees, I'm just unscrewing them from the base, but you can clip them off with wire cutters whatever trees you have, wherever you get yours from. I've had these for a while, so I can't say for sure if they came from Dollar Tree, probably, but I can't say for sure. But you find something that's the equivalent, you know, maybe something that already has snow on it or white, if you wanna do that. I'm just holding it in place, I know you can't see. And then adding some snow on the bottom of my two little elves. One will go on the front and I will have one standing kind of toward the back. So when you move the ornament from side to side or the globe from side to side, you'll be able to see something on both sides. So one's holding the naughty list and the good list and the other one's holding a gift. I'm going to use some Mod Podge and just kind of tap over the high points. So the head, the top of the present, along the Christmas trees, their shoulders, and then I'll sprinkle that snow mixture right on top of those. Until I get the coverage that I like. Now I'm gonna take a little scoop and put it right into the lid. I'm gonna turn this over, tap off the excess, just so that I can get the top screwed into that little canal that we left. This is how it looks before we put it in. Then I'm gonna turn it upside down screw it on and then when you flip it over now you've got the snow you can kind of tap it around and let it settle where you want it you could add more or less snow whatever you like i've decided to flip this little stand upside down to make a more secure base for it and then adding some gorilla glue i'm going to attach the globe to the little stand i'm just flipping it over to make sure i have it centered I don't want it to be wonky, it'll drive me nuts. And then this is the little ornament. Very cute. 
I think it has a lot of interest. And I love the idea of the little elves being at the North Pole. Just gonna fluff out that little trim there so everything's nice and neat. The first project is a collectible deer box. Taking one of these little gift boxes from Dollar Tree. You can get these in a variety of sizes, but mine is about a, looks like a four and a half by four, something to that effect. I'm using some verbiage from a mini pack of paper, and then this pretty piece of paper that came in a big paper pack. This is a Walmart ornament that I actually paid full price for this year. Can you believe it? I had to have it. Couldn't find vintage, but I think this one is vintage enough looking. I'm gonna use bottle brush trees and a variety of ribbons. These are pretty old. The one on the bottom is pretty old. This is not so much. And then this one and this other one are kind of newer. This is just going to give us a variety of textures and colors and then I've got some red jute. You can use things like border stickers if you would like. You can really get creative with this project to make it your own. So we'll start off by taking this little overlay off of the box. We're not going to need it so I'm just going to clean it up. I'll tear off that paper and then pull off those little foam stickers. I'm measuring out my paper here so that I can use it to wrap around the box and I'm writing on the back side. Then I'll draw a line right down here. Most people know how to do this but if you want to know how to make a nice straight line this is how you do it and then you can just cut that out. Now the paper's not quite big enough to go all the way around, so I'm going to have to patch it. So what I'm going to do now is put these pieces side by side, and I'm going to mark on Santa's beard. And then I'm going to cut out about a, mm, I think it's probably two inch, like a little two inch patch here. Two by four. And I am going to just use a little hot glue to put this down. No need to really do Mod Podge or glue. That, you can do it that way, but it's gonna take longer. So if you wanna do it a little bit quicker, cause it's pretty involved, the hot glue is gonna work fine. You could use double stick tape, whatever you wanna use, depending on how permanent you want this to be. So I'll start off by putting the patch down and then I can wrap that bigger piece all the way around. And then of course the area that has the patch is going to be the back of the box. You can line up your patterns if that's something that interests you. Not a big concern for me today. And then I'm just going to roll it around here and then glue the other side. You can use any type of scrapbook paper you like, and you could also definitely use like a gift bag if you could find a nice retro print on a gift bag. That would work too. Now, are these projects exactly replicas of vintage? No, but they're my interpretation of it, and I think that it'll work. I mean, you get the idea. And based on the feedback that I've been getting from the comment section, most people do like the projects that I've done, so I have decided to follow your advice and your um, kindness and to keep trying to do some more retro for you guys. So this is my interpretation. Now the same technique that we used for the bottom part of the box, we're going to use for the lid of the box. Going to make a little patch to go there, measure it out, make a strip, and then cover it. 
Now, for the top of the box, I have some fluffy white yarn, which I wanted to use because I think it's going to give it a nice base. You can either paint your lid white, you can use some of that faux snow, those sheets that you can get from Dollar Tree. You could use something like that. You can use an old white washcloth, you can use a piece of white fabric, any way that you want to do this. I want this to look like a bed of snow, so this is why I chose to use this. You can see that it kind of frays and it's sticking to my finger protector there. Just going to add glue and I'm going to wrap it like a cinnamon roll. Just keep going around and around all the way to the end. And if you don't get the perfect round in the middle, just fill in the blanks. You know, fill in the little spots if you have any little missing spots. I ended up with a lot more on one side of the box than the other, but I patched it in. I'm going to take that screw out of my ornament because it's not going to be an ornament anymore. I'm going to add some hot glue once I know where I want him to sit on there, and then I'm going to place him down. I'm pressing it down, not too hard, but enough that it's going to go through all the way down to the box top. That's why I've used a lot of glue here. I do not want anything falling off. This feels like it's a plastic. It doesn't feel like it's um, breakable, so that's good. Then I'm going to take the trees. I don't need stems on there, so those can be cut off, and then any little frayed pieces can be cut off so that this sits right down in the snow. I like two here. You can use one. You can use white trees. You can use trees with a different shape, whatever you are going for. But I did notice with the vintage that you see a lot of bottle brush trees. So that's kind of what I'm going with here. You know, this it's going to have a little bit of a rustic flair to it, I think. Now, I've got, I had a little package of mini ornaments that I got from... Goodwill. You can see them laying on the table there, and I picked two stars out to put on the top of the trees. One is silver and one is gold, but I'm going to make them both the same shortly. I'm going to use some of those beautiful ribbon to go around the box to make sort of a banding. It's going to go right underneath the glue line, the yarn line, excuse me. I'm just going to press that down in there. And where it looks like it's fraying, that's just where the it's kind of sewn together. So I can just patch that down by adding a little bit of glue and putting it right back in place. And I'm going to go all the way around the box with this. You can use decorative trim. You can use um, some sort of a like a lace trim you could use here if you wanted this to look more Victorian. Whatever colors that you like, whatever scheme that you like, you can go ahead and do it that way. These vintage ribbons I got all on the same day. I have some blue, some pink, some lavender. They're stunning and I cannot wait to use them when we do our Victorian crafts together. So back around to the beginning, I've glued it down, make it look nice and neat. You don't want anything hanging out, so I'm pulling off my little extra glue pieces. And this is how it looks so far. Then I can choose one of these little squares here as like a sign to go on the box. So I'm going to use the one that says Merry Christmas. I've just cut it out. I'm using a piece of foam board. Getting an idea of how much I'm going to need so that it has a little more dimension. And then I'll just use my glue stick as a base and put it all over this foam board. And then put that piece of paper right down on top. And it looks like a sign. I like it. You can kind of crease that and then make a little bend in it if you want to so that it'll lay flatter on your box. I'm going to use this piece to cut into sections to make a square, almost a frame around our box. So now that I know how much I'm going to need, I'll just start cutting off those sections. And you see me here counting how many loops I have. So I'm sure to get this fitting perfectly on there. So I'll do one on each side. I know it's not easy to see and I do apologize for that. I was getting carried away. And then I'll put one across the top and one across the bottom. Now to use this beautiful gold cord. I've had this forever and I have never 
used it in one project. So now we're going to use it. I'm going to use this to go right around the bottom. I'll start in the back over that little gap piece that we had and then just begin to lay a bead of glue little at a time and press that down. I put my thumb under the bottom of the box to make sure that this piece of cord does not go under the box because I want it to sit nice and flat. So that's what I'm doing there, making sure my edge is nice and flat. And we'll do this all the way around. If you don't have this type of cording, and I'm telling you, Dollar Tree has come out with some of the most amazing things in their Crafter Square. You can probably find this any, any, any day walking into Dollar Tree. Maybe not the same color. I know that I've seen white before. Um, you just kind of have to kind of work with what you can find. You could use an old shoelace if you wanted to, if you had something that was the right color. I don't know. That's thinking outside the box, huh? Okay, now turning the box upside down, I'm going to flip that ribbon over so that it's going in the opposite direction of the lid. And I'm sitting it right next to the cording. Doesn't that look pretty with that Santa paper? That's a really pretty paper. And I know that you can get something similar at Hobby Lobby. I've seen people use that paper before, but this actually came in a paper pad um, that a friend gave me. She gave me lots of paper and this was in there and I was tickled to death to get it because that is a beautiful, beautiful Santa photo. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea. This is how the little box is going to look so far. This would be such a cute little keepsake box, I think. Maybe you could put a special ornament in here. You could put a gift in it for somebody who really likes the vintage look and they could use it every year to decorate. You could even fill it with candy. So now I'm going to try to center this down. I put the lid on so I'd make sure that the lid won't overlap onto the sign. Taking this gold paint, I'm going to go right over the top of that silver star because the main tones are going to be, um, it's going to be gold. But you can mix your silver and gold together, certainly. For the table scatter that we're going to use as ornaments, it would have been really nice if I would have had red and green. That would have been so pretty in the tree, but I didn't have those, so I'm just going with what I have. You could use something like buttons in your tree. You could use mini pom-poms in the tree. You could use garland strands that have the little beads. You could do that if you want to. You could just decorate this any way that you would decorate maybe a regular vintage Christmas tree. But I thought this was, this was good. I thought this one did the trick. I've just picked out some white and gold and I've just added it here and there in those trees. Don't want to do too much there. And I think so far so good, right? Now I'm just going to take some of the bigger white ones to look a little bit like snowballs. And I'm going to add those here and there around the stump that the deer is sitting on. And I'm just going to wherever it feels like it looks right. I'm going to add some more in there and you really have to hold it down to make it stay. Now for using a spray Mod Podge, I like to use this with my snow to make things stick, but you've got to be in a well ventilated area. You've got to open a door, you use a little short burst, and then quickly get that snow out and start putting it down. You can use the iridescent snow that you can get at Dollar Tree or whatever you have on hand. I thrifted this, I've used it in several projects and I absolutely love it. I am going to try my best to find something under this brand to put in my Amazon store for y'all in case you were looking for this fine, fine, powdery looking snow rather than the flakes. So I'll see what I can find for you. All right, so I'm just gonna, I got it over this box here and I'm just gonna continue to get it out of the box, add a little glue where I need it and continue to add it onto the deer and onto the trees. So see, I've added some to his back. It's pretty. I really like this project, it's so sweet. What would you do with this box? Would you gift it or would you use it for decorations in your own home? The next project is the Claus campsite. This one gave me so much joy as well. So you remember this sign. I've taken it apart like I do with lots of crafts. We're going to use it again. Bottle brush trees from Dollar Tree and the little vintage Santa and Mrs. Claus. They need a little vacation getaway, right? 
So, I got them an Airstream. Fab Lab is the name of this. I know you can get some Fab Lab on Amazon, but I cannot find the particular one. So wherever you can find one, I'm going to use a elephant gray paint to start off, and then I'll be using some silver on top. I'm going to use a flat brush just because I love a flat brush. Use whatever you want to use. Foam brushes seem to take in a lot of paint, but then you end up washing a lot of paint out of it. So I feel like these waste less paint. I'm going to go all over the entire thing and the bottom and everywhere except the door and the window frames and the wheels, of course. Once it's dried, it only requires one, one layer of paint. I do go back over those areas underneath where it's no paint. And I'm going to grab that beautiful silver and go right on top. I looked up Airstreams and vintage Airstreams and a lot of them were like a silver color or a almost like mirror finish. You could just almost see yourself in them. You can also, you know, they also did like blue and different colors, but I really like this, this look of the silver. So this is what we're going with for Santa and Miss Claus. I mean, I figure the rest of the year they're going with wild colors and all that. So if they're on vacation, they ought to have a little more peace, right? Yes. Now I'm taking this wrought iron paint and I'm going to put this on my wheels. I don't like the stark black look necessarily for this, so this dark gray will work. I'm going to use my saw and since this is a birdhouse, I'm going to just cut down the size of that little perch to look more like a doorknob. And now I'm going to sand it because we want everything to be nice and finished and pretty. I'm using my diamond nail file that I get from Dollar Tree. Highly recommend this for filing these small things. It really sands them down nicely. And then once it's nice and finished looking, wipe off the dust. This is how it's gonna look so far. Grabbing my white chalk paint, I'm gonna go over the door and both window frames. It's a little bit out of focus, so forgive me for that, but I think you get the idea. This is November, and it is Subscriber Appreciation Month for this channel. So listen very closely, because I'm going to be giving you a magic word that you're going to need to comment in the comment section below. And I also want you to check out the rules and all that that I will have linked for you in a pinned comment. Good luck! So if you want to paint this rather than putting something over the top, all you have to do is use some tape on the back and then use a little bit of spackling on the front. Make it nice and smooth by using a little makeup spatula or whatever you have to get the excess off. Let it dry and then you can paint it. But for me, I'm going to use this snow sheet. It doesn't have any sparkles in it. I'm going to fold it in half to make it nice and thick. I'm going to trim the bulk of it off so it's a little more easy to manage. And then I'll begin going around the edge with the glue. It is folded over, but I'm going to open it and then do the next layer. Let me get it all the way around. And then we'll be able to trim it off. This is like a batting, so it gives a little thickness. And it looks a little bit more like snow, I think. I mean, it's all make-believe, but you know, I think it gives a good look. But you do whatever works for you and just use what you have. Okay, so once I've got that second layer down of glue, I'm just gonna press it down and press it, kind of a little bit of tension pulling it outward before I cut it off to make sure that there's plenty all the way to the edges. I don't want anything to show near my edges. If you want a high-end look, you really have to pay attention to details. And I know that you can do that. It takes a little more time, but it's definitely worth it. So once the circle is out there, I'm going to trim this out. I've added a little hot glue, fixed the little raveled piece there, and I know you can't see again, I'm sorry. But there you go, there it is. And I'm gonna kind of put that down right where the wood and that white fabric meat and then press it down. Working in small sections you can use your cool temperature setting on your glue gun and protect your fingers for this because you're going to have to be touching this. 
I'm also going to see how I want to add this on my little camper here. I can always trim out the door. I think I want to trim out my windows. So I'm just going to trim it out, you know, add a little hot glue and tuck that right up against the frame. This also covers if you have any little bumps of paint or little spaces that you couldn't get into. This is going to cover that up. They'll disguise it and you'll never even know it. I'm going to go all the way around. I generally like to start on the bottom. That's just a personal thing. You can do it however you want. If you want to start yours at the top, you can do it that way. Whatever works best for you is going to be the perfect thing for you. So then I'll trim it off and do the same thing over here on this window. Now, you can use any type of jute. You can use a ribbon here. If you don't want to do that, you can grab your puff paint. You can make some decorations. I didn't want this to cross over into a gingerbread look. For this particular video though, not everybody does gingerbread. I do have a gingerbread video though. So feel free to go check that one out when you're done with this one. Now the windows are all decked out. It looks like Mr. and Mrs. Claus have been decorating. And it looks a little bit like it's got ice or snow on it. I'm gonna go around the window because instead of being a birdhouse and this being an opening, this is gonna be their window. And the perch is now the doorknob. If there was any way to get on the inside, I could have done like a stained glass look put like a little curtain in there, that would have been precious. And then trim off. There are just so many options in crafting, right? So many different ways you can decorate with colors and textures. So my little trees here, I'm just gonna give a quick little wrap with the same cord. It sticks in there without needing any glue. It just grabs right down into those little needles. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and trim it off. Now I'm going to grab some of those bottle lights that I use all the time that I love. And fortunately enough, I found a big old pack of them when I was thrifting, so I've still got some to use. And then I use them from project to project, so I just kind of reuse them over and over again. All I'm doing here, I know it's difficult to see, all I'm doing is wrapping the lights around that silver cord. That's all I'm doing. And I'm going to wrap it around just enough. Probably, I think I do like a strip of about seven or eight inches. And I go back upon itself, go back and forth until I get it back in the middle. And then that way I know exactly how much room I have to wrap it around my trees to make sure I have enough. I'm going to add hot glue and then firmly, firmly hold this down into that fabric because it can go through that fabric and onto the board underneath and that's what you want. Because when I start adding snow to this project, I'm going to have to turn it upside down to tap off the excess. So you want to make sure everything is firmly glued into place. And you can tell by kind of wiggling the trees. If they're wiggling a lot from the base, then they're not all the way glued down onto the, um, the base that they're sitting on. They need to be all the way glued down. Now I'm just going to make this go right between the trees. And then they have like a little string lights behind their camper. But the base is firmly planted on there. And don't worry, we're going to disguise the little end down there. You can use Dollar Tree lights for this. Now to make a better base to glue this down, I need to make a little raised area so that it will actually touch without me gluing down the wheels. I want a wider piece so that this really doesn't fall. So I'm just using the handle from a foam brush to put up under there because I save that kind of stuff. You know how crafters are, we save it. I'm going to paint it gray, let it dry, and then we can start adding on the glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue for these projects so that nothing comes off. Going to add a little underneath the front little trailer section, the little trailer hitch, and then I'm going to press it down firmly the same way as I did the trees so that nothing falls off. 
I want to cover up those little wood bases, so I'm cutting circles and putting a little slice in there like a tree skirt. But it's only going to be with the white, and it's not going to be for decoration. It's going to kind of be to disguise those pieces to make it look like the trees are coming out of the snow. But you can use the little fluffy snow for this too if you wanted to, to make some little mounds and hills. I didn't have any of that with me, but that would have been ideal. That would have been really nice. But you get the, you get the gist here. I'm going to do the same thing with the other, and you can pull a little bit on the, that fabric. It is, does have a little give. Cut the little slit in it, and then fit it right around the base of the tree and the little trunk there. And then I'll be pressing that down in place. And then add in a little bit of glue so that it doesn't come up from the bottom. And this is how that looks. Now I'm going to glue down just a little scrap of that fabric onto the top of this. Now if you have the little square box from Dollar Tree, you can do the same thing. You can cover it up. Or if the box is small enough to go under whatever birdhouse or little piece that you use, you can slide it underneath. I do actually discover that at a later point that it will fit right under there. So now we're going to take Santa and Mrs. Claus and find a nice place for them to stand outside of their camper. That, po that position looks pretty good, so we'll, we'll go with that. Their feet are nice and flat, which is perfect. Y'all, these are vintage, and they are made in Macau. Macau, Maku, something like that. Yeah, I looked them up. Then we're going to put Miss Claus over here on this side. And then I'm pressing firmly, just like with the rest of them, really press it down. I decided they needed some electricity in their camper, so I'm going to take my little tool here. Be super careful. You can use a drill, however you can uh, get into this piece of wood. This is a very light crafting wood. Very light. Is it called basswood? Maybe. And then I'm going to just take another one of those string lights and just feed it right through here. Now when I first started doing it, it was trying to come out the window in the front, so I just poked it back in there. I'm holding my hand up there in the front to make sure that everything stays on the inside. You see, it's trying to come out the window. I'm just going to feed it all on the inside. This is a, these lights that are on the inside are a nice yellow color, and then the ones that are in the trees are a bright white color. So here is their house lit up and their string lights and their trees back there. Their party lights. We don't know what kind of life they live when it's not December. We don't know, do we? Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and just a old brush here. And I'm going to go across the top of the camper. Because it is still cold. They're not having a beach vacation. It is still cold outside, so... I'm going to add a thick layer on the top and then just sort of dry brush it going down so that it looks like it is kind of, you know, how snow settles. I'm saying this like I'm so familiar with snow living in South Alabama. But when I see it on TV, it looks like the snow is really piled up on flat places and then it kind of tapers off. So that's kind of what I was going for here, <laughs> my own artistic interpretation. And then I'm going to add to the top of their boots, to the top of their heads, top of their hands, their arms, any of those little areas. And then I'll begin to sprinkle on some more of that snow. We're going to put a lot on the top of that truck camper there. A lot on there. Then I'm just going to turn it over the same box and I'm just recycling. I'm going to tap that off. You see how well everything is glued? Like I'm really really bumping it around there and nothing is coming off. Doesn't that make a huge difference though? Now I noticed that it's such a, it's such a silly thing, but to me I just thought, you know what, I'm a short person and I always appreciate a step to get into things. So we're going to make a step to go in the front here so that the clauses don't have to jump into their house going to add some hot glue around a little building block that I just wrapped with some of that same snow. 
I'm going to brush some of that Mod Podge on it and then put a little bit of snow on the step so that it blends in with the base because we have it all around the bottom too. I sprayed it and got it all covered and then I'm going to take a really fine brush and go on the windows right around the tops of the doors and on the top of our of those little pieces of cording that we put down because that's where snow would settle right so we want it to look nice and frosty right there I'm just using my fingertips to put that on and then I've added little red bows to the windows you can put anything you want on your windows you could put a peppermint on there just whatever you want now I'm taking three different size little pom-poms and we're gonna make a very very simple snowman using just a little bit of glue and I did press the bottom down so it would be flat I'm gonna add the medium size in the middle and the smallest one on top and this is how his body is gonna look then using just a drop of hot glue and some leftover little branch pieces that I cut off I'm gonna tuck those right into the center section to give him some little stick arms and then we can spray him and frost him too but he always had, he already has some little frost on his arms but you can add more very simple right now he needs a scarf I'm gonna use that same red string there and I'm just gonna make a very loose knot just enough to make it look like he might be wearing a scarf and then glue the little pieces down and trim it and he's ready to go in the backyard now that scarf is not too long anymore I'm trying to decide where I want to put him I think I'm gonna put him right here it's between the camper and the tree I'm gonna add some hot glue on that bottom section and just place it down I'm just pressing on the bottom section so that it didn't fall apart and this is how that will look you can see a little frosty in the background so the magic word the key word today is going to be Santa so I want you to comment Santa for your chance to win a prize this week the prize this week is going to be a glue gun with some glue sticks that's right and I'm gonna add some more goodies to the box remember to check out the description box below for the rules this is a bonus look at this little skeleton it came from Dollar Tree these are a collection of cupcake cups that I've had forever in my pantry a little bit of lace trim a variety of ribbons lots of hot glue we're gonna make some clothes so check this out you can run your fingers around the edge of your cupcake paper just get three ones that you like that coordinate and then fold it over 
and then you're going to cut just a little notch out just a little one now because it just needs to be big enough to slide over this little witch it's going to go just like we're getting her dressed in the morning she has no zippers so we're going to make sure that it will go above that pelvis and go right up there all right so now we know that's how we want the skirt to be i'm going to go around and do the same thing with the beautiful candy corn flatten it all out fold it over cut just a little notch out right there so there's another layer of her skirt and then we're going to take the orange and we're going to do the same thing you don't have to completely press out the little um, ridges there you don't have to completely press those out because that'll give some interest in the skirt then you're going to trim just a little off because we want each of these layers to be kind of stacked so we have we'll have the black on the bottom okay i'm going to show you i'm going to trim this one down too we want to make sure that each layer is a little bit longer than the other one or each layer is a little bit shorter than the other one because when you stack it you want to be able to see each color so the black is the biggest and then the orange and then the candy corn so see there that's how it's going to line up a tiny bit of glue here just to hold our pieces together to make it easier when we put this back on our little skeleton just a few little dots and then press that down together all right now she needs a little hat so we're going to make a hat now i'm going to use the black for this i'm going to press it out fold it again just like we did before but this time we're not going to cut anything and once we get it into that position we're going to fold it over once more and it's going to look almost like a little dunce cap isn't that cute use a little hot glue to glue your edges down just make sure that it's going to fit on her then i'm going to cut one of the scraps and make a little band for the hat so i'm cutting that off i'm going to go right around here with a little bit of hot glue and now her little hat is going to match her skirt and y'all don't worry she won't be topless we're going to give her a top too okay her hat is perfect you could put a little any other type of embellishment on there that you wanted to and we're gonna put her skirt back on you see her arms are very rigid they're they don't bend she doesn't have working elbows so close your eyes if you don't want to see this we're doing an amputation but don't worry we'll give her her arms back she'll get them back I'll tell you when you can look don't look yet don't look oh, okay good all right we're good we're good she's not in any pain she's still smiling okay so we are going to take that skirt now that we can get to it better and just fold it over as wide as you want the skirt to be you can leave it completely in a full sweeping circle there or you can give it a dart in the back and make it just a little bit smaller and that's what I decided to do just gonna put some hot glue right in there I'm not concerned that it doesn't line up in the back because you can trim that off and she's gonna be sitting on the skirt so no worries she needs a petticoat or a slip so let's trim this down just big enough that we can glue a piece right on her pelvis and that is going to give her a nice little cover and a little cute little unexpected detail I had way too much fun making this little this cute little girl all right now I'm gonna add some of that it's like a velvet type of trim I got it at the thrift store but I know that you can get something similar like in a satin at Dollar Tree or I have seen it in my stores anyway there's her cute little hat here's her cute little skirt and then I'm trying to find front and back here we can put her arms back on you just have to hold it for just a minute once you put the hot glue down in any position that you like you could have her waving if you wanted to but I want her to be very prim and proper and just have her hands sitting on her skirt in front of her now we're going to make her a cute little halter top trim off a piece we're going to tuck it up underneath her arms this was easy to do 
This was not hard, although you see me fidgeting here. And then you can just trim it off and glue it in the back so it makes just like a little, you know, little top around her. And then we're going to make a halter by just gluing one end down on the left side. Going to take it around her neck and then glue it on the right side. And then you can just trim it up so they're both even and she looks nice and neat. Okay, now we can take our little hat and put it on. Just takes a little hot glue on the front top part of her head since the hat is leaning backwards. That way it can grip onto the, the, uh, the paper there, the cupcake paper. So cute. Okay, don't look. I'm trimming the dress and then we're gonna be taking her legs off in a minute. Okay, don't look, don't look. I'll tell you when to look. Okay, you know bones don't have nerves anyway, so she didn't feel any of that. Okay, now you can look. So now we're gonna put her back on the sign and decide how we want her to sit here. If she is so precious, I love her. I think I want her to sit right at the top. And I'll put her in the top middle. I'm making sure that I have her positioned correctly and I'm gonna glue her legs down to the skirt. This is going to also glue her sort of into a sitting position. And conveniently, that sign that I use has like a lip on it, so she'll sit nicely right up there. But if you have a flat sign, just use one of those tower blocks, glue it to the top, and sit her right on top of that. I'm gonna hold her down for a minute to make sure she stays in place, and let's give her her legs back. Now, I'm going to glue these where it looks like she is sitting with her ankles crossed. Again, prim and proper, sweet little girl. After the glue is dry, go on to the next leg, and then when you put it on, put it on at an angle as well so that her ankles are crossed. And you can use a dot of glue um, between the ankles if you want to. Oh, she's so cute. Y'all, she's cute. I love her. I love her so much. Then she needs to hold something. So you can give her a pumpkin or you can give her a little figurine, like a little black cat, which is super cute too. But because this is kind of a vintage inspired video, I thought maybe we would do something with a little more pizzazz. So I'm just gonna put this little sparkly pom-pom. I'm gonna use one of these cupcake picks and just cut it off. And that came from Dollar Tree and then also a bat and we're going to make her a little scepter or a wand with the bat so i'm going to use my acrylic marker here and just cover that in orange going to add some hot glue and let her hold on to that so is she a witch is she a trick-or-treater is she a clown is she just a skeleton i think she is a trick-or-treating skeleton and she is precious look at her I love it. I hope y'all love her as much as I do and I hope you'll try it. It's really not hard. good luck. The next is our angelic choir. So I've got two of these little trees. I've got some more of that shimmer glitter spray, some vintage little angels, and they're having instruments. Look, one of them's playing the bass. They're from Hong Kong, and then we have a flute and a clarinet, I believe. This is a spoon rest. Wherever Room Essentials comes from, that's where this came from, but I thrifted it automotive cloth from Dollar Tree. We're going to take the heirloom white satin spray paint and spray paint this. After it is dry with one coat, you're going to do each side. You're going to take the handle and spray it with your shimmer spray. Or you can use a shimmer glue, or you can use Mod Podge and glitter, or whatever you want to do. I'm going to make a platform for the top of this. This is going to be like a stage for our angel choir. I'm going to cut out outside of the line just a little bit because I want there to be a lip and you'll see why shortly. Nice and smooth. 
and it is going to fit perfectly on top of my spoon rest. Using my glue gun, I'm going to add some glue all around the edges. This is hot glue, so you got to work kind of quickly and be careful with your fingers. I'm going to place it on top, quickly fold, turn it over, and then just kind of slide it into place. Press it down and let it cool. Then we're going to have to cover our stage. So I'm just using a pen and I'm going outside putting some little guide dots on this automotive cloth so that I have enough to overlap onto the stage part and onto the bottom part. Make it nice and neat. This is not the easiest stuff to cut and I have sharp scissors so just be patient. Protect your fingers. We should all have these finger protectors by now. Then I'm going to add glue on my cardboard section and just squish up the sides. You got to keep it laying flat so that it doesn't slide around and just do this all the way over. It's going to completely cover the little platform and it's going to overlap onto the bottom of the spoon rest. All the way around and you're going to push upward and close your little gap there. Hopefully you won't have any little black marks showing in the end you can't see them but just be careful with that. Here are our beautiful little angels. I want to show you the difference. See, I had two of the same ones. One of them was broken, so I experimented on her. She's missing her little bow. And I really like the way it looks covered. If you don't want to do this and you like the aged patina, by all means, leave it exactly like that. But for me, I wanted this to be a little more, mm, a little more gilded. I guess that's 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 the word I'm gonna go with we're gonna gild them that's what we're doing so I'm gonna do each one of these like this and I'm just kind of offloading the paint and just tapping that all over I don't want a bunch of gloppy paint settling down in all of the cracks I just want it to be pretty and shimmery and rich it makes a big difference so whatever's left on the brush I'm just gonna go over the handle of the spoon rest now we're going to start putting our stage together. We'll start by adding the trees. Making sure that when I put the trees down on here that I'm not taking up too much space and that our angels still have room to be there. You're probably not, well you're most likely not going to have this exact same spoon rest, but you could do this with a Dollar Tree spoon rest probably. I don't know if they have a lip around the edge or not, but it might work. And you could certainly do this with the top of a teacup. That would be really gorgeous. But I didn't have one, so this is what we're using. But it almost looks like a stage, right? Like they would walk up the stage and take their places. Once those angels are dry, we're going to start putting those down on the stage. I'm going to hold it for a minute and press down a little bit so that the glue goes through that fabric onto the cardboard and really locks it into place. I don't want anything flopping around. So, so far, this is how it looks. So pretty. Now we're going to embellish the stage. So I've got some of this old ribbon or trim. I don't know if you, which way, you, what, what would you call this? Trim, ribbon? I've always referred to it as ribbon, but we're gonna trim out the stage with it. So there you go. It's very luxe looking to me with that old gold and the gold in that ribbon or trim is about the same color that is in our angels. So it's perfect and it looks rich and it looks regal and it looks Victorian to me. I'm going to add this all the way around my edge. It doesn't take a lot of glue because the fabrics cling to each other quite well. I'm just going to pat it down until we're all the way around back to the handle of the spoon rest. You can cut that off. And in the shape or the design of this ribbon, it's got little, if you don't cut it in a certain way, it will have little pieces that stick out because they're kind of sewn together. So I'm trying to watch where the stitches are and cut around them so that I still have that really pretty shape without anything fraying. And I do go back over the other side and correct that side too. Now I'm going to make a bow. 
of course, I'm making a bow. With that same beautiful peach and gold, it's just a regular little awareness sign bow, very simple. And it looks like a layered bow because of the two different textures that are on this one piece. I'm gonna give it a couple of knots in the back and then trim off. I just used a little bit of jute. It really kind of blends in because the, the ribbon there is very busy. But you can use whatever you like to close it. I've got this beautiful rhinestone from some fake jewelry. And I'm gonna add it in the center of the bow. Now look at that richness. All right, so Dollar Tree sells these little sheets of pearl looking stickers. I'm just cutting out the sections that I need and I will need a section and a half. You can peel the backing off just like that and then start laying that down. I'm gonna go right over the top, right trying to center it in the peach section. So in that little colored section so that you can still see it. This, these little pearls, the little tape in the back is transparent so you can still see the color underneath. It really just looks like a row of beads on there. You don't even notice the back. Then I'll cut another little section because it wasn't long enough to go all the way around and then trim that off once I get back to the handle. Nice and neatly. This is it so far. Feel free to stop whenever you want to stop. But you know me. I pulled the tops off of some of those ferns. They almost have like a little tree seed pod looking thing on the top. I thought they would be perfect trees to add to the stage. So we have our natural trees on there and we're gonna add some of these golden trees. I've got some little pearl beads. Do not know where they came from, but you certainly can get those at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna add a little hot glue and then go into both of these trees. If you don't use glue, they will pop straight out. That's how it will look on the one tree. And then I have some of these that I got from the thrift store. They're tiny stars, but they don't have, I don't think these have holes. No, they don't. So they're not beads, but there's just some type of an embellishment. But again, the color is perfect. It matches perfectly with the other gold that we have going on here. And I'm not a big gold girl, but this aged gold, I am loving this. It's something so warm about it. Isn't that sweet? Our little angelic choir. If you love these ladies as much as I do, please give me a thumbs up. It tells YouTube that my videos are quality and that you're enjoying it so I can give you more material. Next. The next project is a Halloween hollow. This is a cute little village. Y'all gonna love this. So you're gonna go to Dollar Tree and pick up some of these little cute little houses, little gnome villages, fairy garden pieces, whatever you wanna call it. I have two new ones and this was one I had from before and my owl I had before. I just went and took it out of our fairy garden in the yard. I picked up some more of these pieces for Halloween. These are painted very nicely. None of that sloppy stuff like that's on the houses there. I'm gonna fix these houses. I took them out and gave them a good coat of black paint, each one, and while they're drying, I'm gonna work on the platform or the little, I don't know, the area, the little town that we're gonna be trick-or-treating in. So I'm gonna slice one of these foam balls. One's gonna be a little higher than the other because we're gonna make a dimension here and we're gonna give our houses a little base at different levels. So I decided this one needs to be a little bit more short than the other one, a little shorter. I'm just using my my little metal ruler here to do that. I use it for my styrofoam all the time. They have pool noodle knives though at Dollar Tree now, but they would work great for this. I'm gonna add some cool temp hot glue and I'm going to put this down on my wood slice. If you don't have a wood slice, do not worry about it. You can get round wood pieces or MDF pieces at Dollar Tree. You can use an old round sign, whatever you have. And then this I got thrifted, but I know that they have had sheets of this before at Dollar Tree. So this is like a mossy 
sheet piece. And then you can use like a fast grab tacky glue, you can use cool temp hot glue, you can use whatever type of, um, I don't know, adhesive that you want to use. If you use something like a super glue, it's going to take a whole lot longer for you to get this project done because you have quite a bit of coverage that you need to do. So I'm just kind of sliding this around and I did start off with this tacky glue because I thought it would work good but it goes through the mesh backing and it was sticking to my fingers and I was making an even bigger mess than you are already going to make with this. Be sure you cover your surface or you're going to really be making a mess. Where I need to give more dimension and wrap around those little round spots that are going to be heels, I just give a little cut and just lay it down it very smoothly kind of combines into each other it just kind of you don't even really see a bunch of gaps or areas you see how it looks now, i mean there are a couple of places but you can fix that with cool temperature hot glue if you don't find these sheets you can just use the moss that you get in bags or you can use something out of your yard or green maybe some green felt okay so all of these are black now and i'm going to start covering my own i wanted these to look of course I like them whimsical, but I want them to look a little more rustic as well as being kind of spooky and Halloween-y. So each one of these are going to get a coat of paint, plus I give detail work. I use gray and green and orange and browns in the project. I use also a darker gray, so light and dark gray for the bricks. Um, just letting you know that ahead of time. So this is all dry and this is going to be our base. And now I'll show you how each one of these look after I finished. Doesn't that look much better? Much better. And then here's another one. Yeah, this is so very much better. I love the forms, but sometimes the paint is so sloppy on these things. And then this one, I turned this little mushroom into a little pumpkin mushroom. Now you just get to decide where you want to put them and flatten out the tops of your heels so that you can actually glue them down on a flat surface. I just used the bottle for that. And then you can kind of play around and see which one you want to go where. And then put on your hot glue. And again, you want to use cool temp because you got styrofoam under there that, that would likely melt. I'm just going to press it down and hold it there for a minute to make sure that it stays and then you can move on to the next little houses. It really doesn't matter where you put them, which order you put them in, and for that matter, it doesn't matter which houses you pick up at Dollar Tree. Whatever you have you want to use, go right ahead and use it. These look rustic to me, and that's why I chose them. So the little mushroom and a stone house and a pine cone. Look how bright that yellow is in the windows. It looks like they're lit up like a Thomas Kincaid painting. I love it. So now we need to make a little more of a curve or a little more of a hill going up to the house. I'm just gonna use a little triangle piece of leftover um, floral foam. And then I'm just gonna tack down some more of the little grass sheets. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna make it a little more of a curve going up like a hill. It gives it more dimension, it gives it more interest. It's obviously not lifelike, but it gives it a little more, I don't know, it's a little more convincible, I guess. Convincing. Convincible? What? I, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I need more coffee. <laughs> okay, so if you use your heat gun on here, it will help get rid of all your little glue strings because you're going to have a lot of them using that cool temp. And it also will help shrink that down a little bit uh, onto one another. It kind of melts it together. So I went into the driveway, I picked up some rocks, washed them off, and have brought them in so that I can add them to this little scenery, to our Halloween hollow. And I'm just going to put them around, kind of like uh, maybe stone walls or something, you know, retaining walls here and there. And then we'll make, you could also make like a path or a little driveway or road, you know, just to give you some ideas because Definitely, you don't have to do things exactly like I have. You could just be motivated to do this yourself, any way that you like. So now I kind of have somewhat of a divider here between our houses. I want to have some, 
steps going up to this one so I'm just tucking some around here and I'm just kind of choosing the ones that look a little more like they fit together this makes me go back to the days when we had to make little projects like this for school or we had to make little terrariums for school this is really this was fun for me this was very very fun it's a playful little thing to do and maybe you could have your grandkids or your kids join in and give you some ideas or help you with something like this so this is how it looks so far and I'm gonna continue to show you you're gonna see it from the top looking down but I'm gonna continue to pick it up and show you as we move along so I'm gonna take just a little tree that um, I had from Christmas it's just a little brown tree I'm gonna break one of these twigs from Dollar Tree and add some hot glue and now we have a trunk and then I'm just going to add it down between two trees in the back here and these trees came in a pack uh, there was a green one and a brown one in each one they may have came from Walmart but I got them at the thrift store they might have come from Walmart though originally then I'm gonna use a bigger stick to make this tree even taller because like I said we want height and dimension right I'm going to shrink down the little glue that's all over the place again, and then this is what it looks like with the trees. And then here are all the little creatures that we have to use. Little creatures, signs, trick-or-treaters, and you're just going to start placing these around where they make sense to you. And you can, you can move some things if you don't like it. So I want my owl on top of the house. Ideally, an owl would not be nesting in the top of a house, but I like it there. I want him to be watching over. He's a wise old owl. We gotta give him a nice soft nest. So, got some peat moss. Nope, this is not peat moss, this is Spanish moss. And I'm gonna just wind it up. I twisted it into a string and then wind it up and it will pretty much catch onto itself. And then trim off all the little crazy stray things going on here, the little hairs and such. I'm gonna paint the bottom where I cut off all the excess on that owl with my little bull nose cutters there after he's dry I'm gonna hot glue him in his nest and then we'll put him right up here near the chimney in the top of this house look at his overlook there yes he's happy there he's keeping all the trick-or-treaters safe so then I'm just gonna take my little signs and I'm just gonna place them here and there almost like it's Halloween night and kids are trick-or-treating you see I peeled that one up I wanted to move it so it came up nicely just be careful and slow when you do it and I decided to put a cat and a jack-o-lantern right in that spot look how cute then I'm gonna add two little trick-or-treaters I've put the mummy there and the little witch isn't that cute so I'm gonna turn it around because I want some interest on the back side as well kind of a surprise because you won't necessarily expect to see this so we're gonna hide a little kitty in the back behind the house and under the tree he snuck off with a pumpkin and then I'm gonna add a little sign that says beware cute cute 